Here we go for round number one. We have Nadia Chimmel in the blue corner, coming in with an 0 and 1 record. I mean, 1 and 0 record taking on Sawandi. Fifth Anage with an 0 and run record at the very opening bout of the undercard portion. And as I said before, women's fight every second of every round. These guys, these girls are going at it right away. Punch for punch, pick, kick for kick. Sawandi dressed in the red. Nadia in the blue. And they are throwing back and forth. As you said, David, they go right into it and they usually fill up. Whoa, looks like a little bit of a slip there. Referee Dan Bam Bam still steps in. It's like Nadia's back to that jab. Sawandi, whoa, little, another little slip there. Looks like the fighter's getting used to the ring here. Sometimes there's a little bit of slippage when they first begin, but looks like they're settling in here. Nice jab lands by Chimmel here. Nice knee. Sawandi dressed in the red, only 18 years old. College student now devoting more time to Muay Thai. Spin back kick by Nadia. Nice, nice. And then the inside, and then she tripled up with that left leg. Looks like Sawandi is getting back up to the ropes. They're right here in front of us. Good clinch, knees exchanged here. Nadia pulls out, throws a couple of punches, straightens out, steps back, nice inside leg kick, hits again. We are in the very first round of our opening fight, right here, Triumph at seven. And these girls are getting right to work, David. Now you can see these girls wearing headgear and shin pads, and it's because they have under three fights, they still need to wear gear. After the third fight, they can fight without shin pads and headgear. Oh, another nice push kick. Now I know uh, Nadia comes from CSA, and uh, they're known for their, their deep abilities there. Oh, a oh. standing eight count issued by Dan Bam Bam Stell. Standing eight count, fighter has eight seconds. Coming straight in, showing that she wants to fight. Her hands are up. She wants to go That It's the end of round one. All right. Round number two is coming up. Nadia Sudanje. Fighting out of Muay Muay Thai, 18 years old. Her record 0-1. Nadia Chamil fighting out of CSA, 26 years old. 1-0 record. This is round number two coming up. These ladies here putting it all on the line. There you see Nadia standing, talking to her coach, Kieran Fitzgibbons. Yes, from CSA. You know, they have a stellar girls team there at CSA. Gaston Bellano's there talking to his fighter, Nadia. And here we go for round number two. These ladies are fighting three two-minute rounds, one-minute break in between. Dan Bam Bam Stells, Rats to set some four for round number two. Round number two, the opening fight. I am Brandon Kyle sitting next to David Huey. This is Triumphant Muay Thai Series 7. We have Nadia Chimmel taking on Sil Wandi Vithanage. And Nadia really turning on the heat right now. Trying to smother Sawandi. Sawandi trying to lift up the leg, trying to use that push kick. She gets a push kick in return. I tell you what, all those uh, girls from CSA are stellar with the push kicks. You can tell Nadia's been working that with the likes of Azoila Frosto and the other professionals there. It's one of the best girls teams in the country, maybe the world, and you can see it paying off. Nice overhand right to the knee strike by Chimmel. Uh, short Superman punch coming in, follow up the uppercut from Nadia. Chimmel is just putting things together right now. You can see, oh, another nice teep. Feeling very confident in there. It looks like Sawandi is having trouble feeling her bearings here. Pawing a jab, not very confident with it. Another nice leg kick by Chimmel. And Nadia is just shutting down the timing of Sawandi. Sawandi not able to get off, not able to set down, not able to set up her punches or kicks. Yeah, it looks like she's a little bit overwhelmed. That teeth kick is really keeping her at distance. She, she's having trouble getting in and landing anything major here. And Nadia uses that push kick. She slides in with that push kick, covering a good amount of distance. Now she's punching the head, going to the clinch. Spin back fixes glazes off. Not oh, even she's looking really it. overwhelmed here in the corner. She's not sure. She is putting Sawandi in, in defensive position. Yeah, as you can see in the eyes of Sawandi, it doesn't look like she's she's able to find an answer to, to Chimmel standing right in front of her, teeing off now. Left not, jab. Not even just shutting down her timing. She's just, just shutting down the timing so Sawandi can't get off. And every time she gets rocked, like a jab or a head kick, or a push kick like that, she has to reset her action. 
looks like referee Dan Van Vessel's taking a really, really close look. It's a wandy here. And that's the end of round number two. Round number three is coming up. Now Dan Van Vessel is asking his coach, does she want to fight? Does she want to continue on for round number three? The coaches here only have one minute to give their fighters advice to try to adjust their game plan. So we're going to see what they're going to do here. Let's take a look at some of the, the first knockdown from the first round. And here we go, taking a look at some uh, the replay from the first round. And you see Nadia just applying the pressure, moving forward, stiffing that jab and that sliding push kick that just knocks down Sawandi. Yeah, you know, I talked to Nadia Chimel, you know, she actually was from Seattle originally. She moved to uh, New Mexico to train at Jackson Winkle John. She thought she wanted to do MMA, didn't know what Muay Thai was. Once she realized she wanted to do Muay Thai, she said, I want to go to where I feel like the best uh, striking school in the country. She went to CSA, and now you can see it's paying dividends here in her second amateur fight here. So Wandy coming out. Looks like she has a little bit more vigor in her, in her eye here, but it, Nadia just coming forward and taking that right out. Beginning of this second, I mean, third round and final round here. And this is the third and final round, so Wandy's going to have to either knock down Nadia to get a draw or knock her out to get the win. Spin back fist. Oh, and that's it. Dan Bam Bam still calls his fight off. And you could say it's an early stoppage, but you have to think and you have to consider, is the opponent fighting back? Is she delivering? And you know what? Fighters can fight another day. They can fight another day, take what they learned from this fight experience and apply it to become better in the future. I think it was a good stoppage. Yeah, you know, I tell you what, this is, these, these girls have a, a one uh, fight in their careers each. And as an amateur level, you can't really uh, risk really taking major damage. It could really change the career of a fighter. You know, these are learning experiences, especially in these amateur ranks. Uh, with such few fights, it would be a shame to have somebody really hurt and discourage them from continuing to train and compete. So I think Dan Bam Bam still did the right thing there. Yeah, and, they, and the fighters have to take it back to the camp. They have to take it back. So you say you win, so oh, yes. you learn. They're going to learn. She is going to learn. Swanee's going to learn from this bout. She's going to come back a lot stronger. Let's send it to our ring announcer, the UFC veteran, Seven Bonner. There you see a happy victory, Nadia. Extremely, extremely happy for her victory. Now improving her record to 2 and 0. Oh. Yes, I was actually at Nadia's first fight in the Bay Area, and she had a dominating performance in that fight as well. She looks like a fighter that has a lot more than two years of experience as she does. But as I said, she's dedicated to the sport. She wants to improve, and it looks like she is quite quickly here. And now we'll send it to Stefan Bonner for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee Dan Stell calls a fight to this, calls a stop to this fight at one minute, 37 seconds of round three. Declaring your winner, fighting out of the blue corner, Nadia Camille. There you go, a well-earned victory for Nadia Jamil. Taking a win in the third round, one minute, 37 seconds over. So Wandi Vitanaji. A great fight between two warriors. And I said earlier, these ladies will put a high output fight together. And that's exactly what they delivered, David. Exactly so. And there's a face of a happy winner. Her coach, Kieran Fitzgibbon, and Mixed martial arts and Thai boxer Gaston Bellano standing beside her. A great win. Wow, what a great way to stop this, start this show here in Samstown. Let's get ready for our second bout of the evening. We're going to have Joey Gentile taking on Edwin De Los Santos.
Lights are dimmed down. We are in anticipation of our next fighters. And There we go. Oh, we right. have our tail of the tape coming up right now. We have two big time amateurs, guys with lots of experience with Edwin De Los Santos coming out of a smash fight team. He's got a record of five and one, 25 years old. He's a uh, stance five, five. He fights at 132 pounds. He weighs a little bit less than that. Taking on Joey Gentile. And he is seven and four, 32 years old. Got a one inch height advantage over De Los Santos, standing five, six. This fight scheduled for three two-minute rounds. And a great fight, a great matchup for this one here. Joey Gentile fighting out Tongsai Muay Thai out in Oregon. He's stepping into the ring right now, stepping over the ropes, wearing the ceremonial Mong Kong, raising his hands, and greeting his fans out there. And here we have Edwin De Los Santos making his way to the ring. Representing Smash Fight Team out of Milkita, California. Fighting out of the blue corner tonight. Waiting for his coach, Rudy Ott. Rudy Ott, a former Sanchow and kickboxing world champion. Trained under the tutelage of Kung Lee out there in San Jose for many years. Has been training fighters now for himself, owning his gym for about 10 years now. Trains fighters and fights all over the world. This Just is going to be a great matchup. 132 pounds between these two warriors. And you can see fighters there wearing only elbow pads. No headgear, no shin pads. This is truly the art of eight limbs for amateur Muay Thai. Let's send it to Stefan Bonner for our official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this next fight of the evening is in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 133 pounds, posting a record of seven wins, four losses. Fighting out of Eugene, Oregon. Please welcome Joey Gentile. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He represents Milditas, California. Weighed in at 132 pounds with a record of five wins and three losses. Yeah. Give it up for Edwin De La Santos. Edwin De La Santos, smash fighter. Look at that, and symbol and rem reminiscent of Street Fighter, that Street Fighter logo. We're in a ceremonial honk, Hong Kong, a headband placed over the heads. These fighters are going to seal the ring right now, possibly pointing to wide crew. And here they seal the ring. They walk around each corner of the ring, touching each corner, sealing off the ring. They're trying to prevent bad luck from entering the ring and keep their own good luck inside the ring. Now, you notice some fighters choose to do the ceremony while some fighters uh, choose to abstain from doing the ceremony. It's just a, it's a choice thing. Um, you know, some fighters that, that find that more traditional route uh, to, to be more appealing to them, they'll usually do that. And then you'll see later on, I'm sure, uh, with Nara Paul and some of the other fighters, they'll do some of the more ceremonial dances like the Y Crew and the Ram Moy. And we will explain to you exactly what's going on for those folks at home that might be new to the sport or unaware of exactly what each thing represents. That's why we bring our resident Muay Thai expert, David Huey, along for all of these fights. That and he's so damn handsome, of course. <laughs> Someone's <laughs> got to be handsome in the booth, David. Well, they're just sealing off the ring this time. They're taking off that ceremonial Mong Kong, a Mong Kong, a headband, blessed by monks, offering protection to their fighters. And there we see Joey Gentile with his trainer, Tong Sai. Now you see Joey Gentile, he's wearing that, 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 like, that traditional armband, David. What is the armband for for the folks at home? Now that's the project, and it offers protections. Days in the Ancient times, 
Mothers would tear a piece of their clothing, put an armband around their fighter, and say, come back from war with that, arm, with that piece of cloth, meaning you have to return from war. You cannot die in war. So a lot of fighters adapt that, still continue, and that's why we have that project. Here we go. We are on to the second fight of the night. Joey Gentili taking on Edward De Los Santos at 132 pounds. Edward De Los Santos in the blue trunks. Joey Gentili is in the red trunks. Edward De Los Santos fighting out of the southpaw stance. An overhook comes from Edwin. And if you notice, you can every time that Joey lands, you're going to hear the corner of Joey kind of doing a little chant, almost like a little cheer. This is something that you hear quite often in Thailand, correct, right, David? You do, and, and you hear that because they want the, in, in this particular case, they want the corners, they want the referees to know that was a blow. That one definitely scored. But in fans, when, when fighters, when fans bet on fighters, they want to make sure they're, that their voice is being heard because they want to win that money. And you see the really good exchanges back and forth. And De Los Santos tries to do a little foot sweep from the clinch there. Looks like Dan said, not enough work going on. Let's break him up, boys. Oh, nice body shot. That little dip from Gentili hit the body there. They'll start to add up later on in this three-round fight. Oh, absolutely. Even those knees there. Oh, Ooh, a nice little thump there. Looks like uh, Joey's feeling good. Oh, nice. Uh, another nice hook. Looks like Joey's really trying to set up that lead hook to the body and to the head of De Los Santos. Uh, De Los Santos goes for a little body kick. It slips there. Looks like he was thinking head kick last minute. Try to change it up and slipped up. Yeah, Bam Bam's not letting him work too much on the clinch. If you're not doing work. Oh, nice Superman punch from De Los Santos. But Joey Gentili looked like he's un unfazed by that. Back and forth, trading leg kicks here. Final 10 seconds of this round, fighters going to a clinch. De Los Santos tries a short elbow, doesn't work. And this round comes to a close. Wow, great action for the first round. Yeah, very good action back and forth. Uh, I do feel like Joey Gentili was doing a little bit more. He was landing some good shots. It looked like De Los Santos was in good places to land shots, but lost his balance here and there was able to really land a nice, effective, clear shot. But then again, I might be like one of the judges getting swayed by the oh, oh of, the of the corner here, David. So you never know. I, I, to be honest, I've seen uh, fights get swayed sometimes that, that way. So yeah, it, judges are not supposed to listen to that, but sometimes it's unavoidable. Yeah, it's, unavoidable. it's like in the, in the Let's court. Let's take a look at some of the replay oh, yeah, action. Oh, replay action going here. A little bit of that clinch back and forth here. This might be that nice dump that Gentili did. Well, there, yep, there it is right there, that little up and over hip toss. De Los Santos looks like he's more upset than injured by it. And this coach Rudy Ott giving this fighter Edwin De Los Santos the final advice before stepping out for round number two. These fighters have felt each other out. I think this round, this second round is going to start with a little more action. I'll tell you what, at this, at this 132 pound lightweight class, you're going to see a lot of action out of these guys now that they're feeling it up. And you know, I, I, I know how Rudy coaches. After his fighter has a round like that, I guarantee you he's lighting a fire underneath him. So you're going to see a different Edwin De Los Santos, I think, in this run. You can see it in the eyes already. But you know what? Boy, that little lift and dump. I'm not sure how Bam's going to feel about that. He, yeah. he doesn't like so it. I'll tell you, you that. You cannot lift the opponent. You can throw him off leverage, but you cannot lift and throw. So he warns him to not, throw, not lift and throw. A nice knee that from that <laughs> kick catch. And I'm not sure. You know, he, he kicked the leg there, so Bam let him get away with that one. But he is fighting very aggressively. He is Gentili in this second fight of our... Muay Thai Series 7 card. Joe trying to march forward. Catches the leg. Tries to counter kick. Chantilly's looking like he's feeling real comfortable in there, David. He's looking good. He's feeling really balanced. He's finding this flow. But again, Edwin Del, De Los Santos is just coming in. He's throwing fire. He's trying to shut down the timing, and it looks like he's getting some punches in right now. Scoring with a nice cross. Oy, nice step in knee right when Gentili was going for that overhand right. He timed it perfectly, and that's how you get the double the impact when your opponent is, is reaching forward while you hit that knee. Another knee, same spot there. Absolutely, that's like a head-on collision right there. More clinch action. Wow. You can see the power and strength that Gentili just kind of tossing Del Yes, he's using good leverage on the throw. He's showing command and strength in the in the toss. 
to De Los Santos' credit, he did move up to take this fight. His original fight was scheduled at 127, and uh, he moved up because his original opponent pulled out. So give him credit for moving up to a bigger weight class for the first time here tonight. Oh, absolutely. That's the heart of a warrior every time. You know, a lot of times fighters just want to fight. When you get that close to the game, your opponent pulls out, hey, <laughs> you'll take a fight no matter what, you know? Now, you, you just saw uh, Gentili's corner pick him up, uh, carry him to the corner, David. Now, I was literally just a couple weeks ago at a Muay Thai fight, and, and one of my friends, uh, who assumes I'm, I, I, I have some kind of knowledge about the sport, asked me why they do that, and I couldn't give him an answer, David. And, and I was wondering if you had any reason or if that's just something that some well, camps two do two reasons. Sometimes they want to lift and try to stretch out their spine. You know, and also get a little bit more oxygen inside them. So they do pick them up just to get that extra time there to try and stretch them out and, uh, you know, bring them back a little bit more fresher when they come in for the second round. Let's take a look at some of the replay action coming up right now from the... Oh, and here yeah. we go, fighters in that clinch position. And you can see there that leverage throw by Joey. Just very, very nicely done off that thigh. So powerful is Gentili. And let's get this third round of our second fight here at Triumphant Muay Thai Series 7. Edwin Dillis is in the blue, taking on Joey Gentili in the red. Looks like Gentili is, is, is kind of overpowering De Los Santos, moving up. But De Los Santos is coming out with the fury here. I think he knows he might be down two rounds, and he wants to try to take out Gentili in the third round. But they're doing the right thing. They're really, really trying to make a statement in this third and final round. You never know, this round could be even one and one in a three round fight. You gotta put it all on the line when it's this close. A little body shot there by Joey Gentile. And these guys are throwing leg kick for leg kick. Oh, look at the eyes of De Los Santos. He looks like a man possessed in there. I think he knows what he needs to do, and he is trying with all his might to do it here, David. Nice clean spin and knee from Joey Gentile. Gentile really seems like he's, 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 he's taking advantage of the clinch here and, and, and owning that space. Boy, nice leg kick throw by De Los Santos. Oh, I see a little wear and tear in the eyes of Joey Gentile. He put a lot of effort into those throws, and I'll tell you what, that can really drain a man. Oh, spin back and will miss his end. Gets caught in the counter with the knee. Nice, another nice leg kick. Gentili's kind of slowing down in this third round, David. There's only two minutes, though, as opposed to the professionals that have three minutes. So, De Los Santos doesn't have a lot of time to do what he needs to do to take out Gentili, but he's really giving 100% oh, effort. Nice elbow on the inside. Nice up elbow, right? Yeah, this is a high output fight. These fighters are fighting every second of that two minute round. Nice body kick by Gentili. Nice leg kick by Gentili, but right back with a body kick by De Los Santos. 20 seconds left in this round, guys. Who's gonna take the second fight of our Triumphant Muay Thai Series 7 show? Let's see, 10 seconds left. Can Chintilly stay up while Edwin De Los Santos is trying with all his might to take him out here? One last clinch exchange and the fight is over, folks. We're going to the cards. Wow, man, you know? A fight like this, you see fighters coming together and hugging each other after the fight, and it just shows just a level of respect. You know, both fighters knew they put in a lot of work for this. They put each the same amount of work, and it is just a level of respect in Muay Thai that you don't hardly see in different in other combat sports. Well, yes, you know, Muay Thai is a martial art. So there's a level of respect, ritual, respect for authority. Uh, and you see that come out in Muay Thai fights, David. Because of that training that they have, they're martial artists before they're fighters. And, and you see that at, at the end of a fight like that. Uh, let's take a look at some of the replay action from the third round right here. It's hot action, these fighters are going back and forth, leg kick for leg kick, just chopping each other's thigh and trying to get that punch over the top in between. A rally of punches and low kicks. Bam, these guys are going back and forth. They, again, they want it, they want to earn that statement. They want to be the winner of that third and final round. It could come to who took that third and final round. You know, we will see. We will see, it looked like Chintilly did a lot in those first two rounds, especially with those dumps from the clinch, but we don't know what the referees saw. They might be judging the leg kicks of De Los Santos over the clinch of Gentili. It all depends on what the ref or the judges are seeing here in the fight. And every judge is different. Yeah, great work from both these fighters. I see Joey Gentili putting on a little bit more action. And as we wait for the decision of that Joey Gentili, Edwin De Los Santos fight, 
We are looking forward to this two high-level amateur fight between Chelsea, Alexis Van, and Liz Swabby Clacken. Both of these girls have trouble finding fights. So Chelsea Alexis Fan moves up in weight class to take on Swabby Clackage. Oh, she takes this fight under one week's notice, and that is a heart of a warrior stepping up under one week's notice. Chelsea Alexis Fan, seven wins, four defeats. Liz Clacken, seven wins and three defeats. Let's send it and let's see what our official decision is for this fast fight. Edwin De Los Santos versus Joey Gentil. Boy, great action here. It's in the hands of the judges. Let's send it to our ring announcer. Stephen Bonner. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The first judge scores about 30-27 for the right corner. Judge two scores about 29-28 for the blue corner. We have a split decision, David. And judge three scores about 29-28. Introducing your winner by split decision, fighting out of the blue corner, Edwin De Los Santos! Chili was enough to take those first two rounds, but as I said, those late kicks by Edwin De Los Santos might have left more of an impression on the judge's scorecard. Oh, absolutely. You know, Muay Thai is judged on damage. First of all, it's knockout, and if you can't knock somebody out, what's the next closest thing? Technical knockout or damage? And so, hey, it's a great bout here. Very, very close, and very close. And I said, you know, that third round could have determined it. And it 29, looks like it did. 28. Looks yeah, like it did, David. Scorecards. Absolutely right. A great fight between both of these fighters. Coming up next, oh boy, Chelsea Alexis Van from Tongside Muay Thai is gonna take on Liz Swabby Clacken from the Combat Sports Academy. Yeah, the Chelsea Van coming in with seven and four record, she's 27 years old. 5'2, Liz Swabby Clacken, same height, 5'2, 30 years old. So a couple more years on Chelsea, also with a 7 4 record. This is where you see two really evenly matched fighters. The only difference, Chelsea Alexis Van, usually, as you said earlier in the opening, comes in two weight classes lighter taking this on short notice because she just wants that challenge and there and you see chelsea alexis van They're very happy to be here she told me she was just so excited she was just willing to take the fight and taking this fight also to fight along two other of her teammates yes jesus in the groove joey gentili also from her team who you just saw lose a very close decision, split decision. Also, professional Nathan Adams taking on Miguel El Mofice later on in our pro main portion of our card. Chelsea Alexis Van takes a pair for stepping into the ring. And there she is, just happy in the groove to be here. The fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. And she's just bouncing across the ring. And she has a yeah. tough task in front of her, taking on Liz Swabby Clacken. As you said, tough for Liz to find fights. You watch the tape on her, not the type that people are lining up to fight necessarily. So she's happy to get in there. Her husband, Steve Swabby Clacken, also a professional fighter, who also has trouble finding fights. They see some tape on him. He's a very technical fighter as well. And uh, both the Swabby Clackens maybe need to sandbag their, uh, their, their, their tape that they put out on their social media because uh, it looks like they're losing fights left and right when people see them hitting pads. So Liz is just happy to get in there and be able to display her skills here. Representing CSA, looks like world champion Gaston Bolanos is also cornering Liz here. Liz fighting out of CSA as her husband does as well. And Gaston and Coach Kirian looking like they're corner and another fighter here. They also have three fighters on the card tonight as well. David. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Liz is just so happy to be in this fight. And I'm so happy that she got a fight. You know, having a fight canceled on you, it's just a tough thing, tough thing for you mentally. 
But let's send it to Stefan Bonner for our official, official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for our next bout of the evening in the bantamweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, she hails from Vallejo, California, with a record of seven wins, three losses, weighing in at 123 pounds. Please give it up for Liz Clacken! And her opponent, fighting out of the red corner. She hails from Eugene, Oregon, with a record of seven wins, four losses. She weighed in at 122 pounds. Please welcome Chelsea Alexis Van. Wow, I'm just excited for this one. Chelsea Alexis Van. Fighting out of Oregon, coming in with her team, Tongsai Muay Thai and Liz Clacken. I'm happy she got a fight, and I said before, she is like the airlines on a snowy day, man. Tough to get a flight, <laughs> tough to get a fight, Just right? getting canceled, just getting canceled, yeah. But she's here, and she's happy to be here, and I'm so happy that Chelsea Alexis Van has given her that opportunity. Yeah, I've been watching Liz for a long time. She's a Bay a staple. She was a Bay Area Challenge champion. She has fought many times in the Bay Area. She's got an extensive record, as you see. Seven wins, three losses. Both of these girls have an incredible amount of skill and talent, and it's just good to see them match up. Two of the, the best in the West Coast meeting up for the first time here on Triumphant 7, David. You know, and women's Muay Thai has definitely elevated in the past five years. There have been great fighters, great women fighters stepping into the game, and they're able to hold their own also, not only in the United States, but internationally. This time we are going to see the full Y crew, I guess, from Chelsea Alexis Van. And here she's paying respects. Y crew literally means paying respects to your teachers. And, she, and those teachers could be their crew or their instructor, the king of Thailand, whatever god they believe in, their parents, it could be any one of those things that she's paying respects for her teachers. And Liz Clacken's getting her hair taped up. Yeah, and I've seen this happen several times when uh, you know fighters have the braids that are a little too long. I've seen uh, the officials actually stop in the middle of a fight one time and uh, have to tape up the, the tail just in case, you know, you never know if you spin around with a swinging, spinning back fist or turn from your opponent and that hair whips them in the eye. Oh, they spinning haircut, huh? Spinning hair, your technique. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I saw that in the movies. Yeah, the you movies. know, those Van Damme movies uh, <laughs> got people thinking, so they, they, they decided maybe we should tape that hair down. All right, her white crew comes a little bit short, short and then she's back into the her corner. Getting a little bit of Vaseline applied on her face before she takes off the ceremonial Mong Kong, which she wears on top of her head. Her coach, Tong Sai, takes off that headband. Yeah, taking off that necklace from Chelsea Lessons Van. And here we go for round number one. Yes, David. Oh, right off the bat. Looks like Chelsea Alexis Van is not trying to feel Liz out here. She knows she's a smaller opponent. Looks like she's trying to get the jump. Big shots exchanged early on in the fight. Lots of hands, boxing combinations, and knees from the clinch here. You can see the obvious apparent size difference between the two girls. Liz Bobby Clackett pushing Alexis Van to the ropes here. Taking advantage with some nice knees from the clinch here. Chelsea trying to go over the top with an elbow, comes up short. She's trying to use that push kick to keep her at bay. Nice check from Swabby Clagan. Looks like Chelsea is calming down a little bit from that initial onslaught. She tried to provide that very opening minute of the first round here. And I said this is going to be a high output fight and they are delivering high output action here even on the first round. Chelsea trying to use almost like a peekaboo style coming forward with her body a little bit. You see that? I was wondering that's that a little bit of a more of a squat, hands up high kind of. 
looking to counter possibly and slip and rip, but Bobby Clacken finding the mark with her one, two into the knee and clinch again. Clacken using that kind of strength to, to push Alexis Van to the ropes. Chelsea got the inside position on the clinch. Turning, using that knee. Trying to use that knee guard, but wow, it's funny to see a fighter in there get dumped and have a huge smile on her face, but she just loves being in there. You can tell she just loves the experience. And nice switch body, kind of a standing. Not even a switch, just lifted that left leg into the body, but Swabby Clacken with a nice knee from the clinch. 10 seconds left, first round. Chelsea Alexis Van versus Liz Swabby Clacken. Wow, Dave, for, uh, the only thing I can see is that just an obvious size difference there. I think Liz probably cut a little bit of weight to make this weight, and Chelsea might have been at the buffet trying to, to bulk up to make the weight here, so. But skill for skill, I mean, it's a very even fight. They both have good clinch work. They're putting high output punches together. It's a tough one to score as a, as a judge. I mean, there's a lot of action going back and forth. How do you score that? Yeah, that's tough, you know, I mean, I've seen judges look at who's the aggressor, who's pushing forward, some judges are looking at that, and you have some judges that are looking at uh, who's more technical. Let's take a look at some of the replay action from our first round between these two girls. They're going to be throwing a lot of heat back and forth, and you can see them just piling on the fist. See Liz Swipe trying to throw the punches, and then Chelsea Van trying to counterattack. She's trying to slip in the elbow in between. Here we go for round number two. Chelsea coming out with that punch style. Takes that right hand by Swabby Clackett. Landon, a nice jab though. Inside leg kick two times on it. Oh, these girls are throwing leather. Looks like Swabby Clackett's really trying to push forward. Use that size. Almost went for a little takedown. A single leg takedown there, it looked like. Releases here. Just Swabby Clackett just pushing forward here, but. Chelsea Van is relentless. Kind of resembles a bull fighting a bee here, where the bull's <laughs> moving forward and the bee's moving out, stinging, moving out, stinging. Looks Chelsea's like, trying to use that head movement, trying to slip those punches. Yeah, you gotta be a tough target to hit when you're standing in front of a bigger opponent. Just love the enthusiasm on Chelsea Van's face here, smiling the whole fight. Go back and forth. Liz is really trying to push. Liz is getting those one-two punches in. She's getting in there. She's sitting down on her punches a little bit more, coming forward. And there they say there's an exchange of knees. A nice turn by Chelsea. Like Swabby Clark is slowing down a little bit on that forward pressure. You see a kind of a, a stern look on her face, maybe getting a little tired from all that early aggression. Chelsea Van still standing right in front of her. Nice teeth there from Chelsea. Teeth known as push kick is that front kick that you see in Muay Thai. Keeps the distance away. Here, Chelsea Van's corner calling for numbers, looking to score points. The end of this second round of this action-packed third fight of our opening card here of the triumphant seven. Wow. Oh, and coming up next is a bout I'm really excited about. It's two of California's best. When Chris Paez takes on Russell Bayerski, Chris a two-time IFS title holder. Russell Bayerski just won a IKF Northern California title just last month, so they're both hot and they're both looking to claim that California supremacy in our next fight. Yeah, I'm excited for that, that one, but here I'm excited for this third round. Look, look at the second round action. These girls are throwing back and forth. It is leather against leather. And they are just trying to establish their dominance. Man, it is back and forth, knee to knee, punch to punch. Dan, Bam Bam still calling both fighters out. This is the third and final round. Wow, who wants it more? Let's see, this is round number three. Chelsea Alexis Van with the red gloves. Liz Swappy clacking with the blue gloves.
Chelsea's putting a high output of knees. And Liz trying to find her position. Man, David, this is so back and forth. I it mean, is, It's almost man. like they're trading shot for shot. Here, I'll take this. Well, here, take mine. Oh, you're going to give me this? Well, here, I got that too. Nice. I like the way that Liz is over punching. She's trying to go over the top of Chelsea's hands. But Chelsea's not, not giving up. She's putting spin techniques. She's putting knees. She's putting kicks. Chelsea, Alexis fan, looking like a whirling dervish of Muay Thai in there. One strike after another. But Liz Swabby Clacken pushing forward, really trying to impose that size on Alexis Van. As, as we said in uh, Joey Gentili's fight, the corner. Eight edging their fighter here, really pushing their fighter on with every strike. Nice little catch and, and dump there from Swabby Clacken. Brothers going in. I'm getting lost in the moment. They're throwing so much. Nice turn and knee from Chelsea Van. Liz Swabaclack and trying to push her against the rope and get that knee position in. 30, 30 seconds left in the round. Third and final round. 30 seconds left, guys. This is amazing. It's, it's tough to find time to talk when they're constantly throwing. If we mentioned every strike they were throwing, I think we would die of asphyxiation here, David. They're just throwing so many strikes back and forth. Elbows, knees, everything from exactly. the clinch. Exactly. Ten you seconds call a left. Special technique. It's, a, it's like 20 punches later. But <laughs> button mashing. If there were videos, some, someone's playing like a video game, just smashing every button in the book, throwing everything at the book, and that is the end of the third and final round. We are going to the cards, David. Wow, wow, what a fight, man! And they fought every second. They were determined to not stop their fight, not slow down. You know, no one thought they had the fight sealed. That's why they fought all the way to the end. What a great fight between Chelsea, Alexis Van, and Liz Swabby Clacken. David, do you have your lucky quarter? Because I think we need to flip to see who's <laughs> going to win this fight. I just can't call it. I just can't call it. Uh, in the end, the fans, the audience here, they all win to see a fight like this. Exactly. No matter who wins this fight, Everybody else is a winner, and, and both of them are winners as well to come to Las Vegas here at the Samstown Casino and Hotel and put on a performance like that. They should both hold their heads high and be proud, no matter the outcome of the fight, David. And you can see their fight experience, both fighters with 11 fights underneath their belt. Their record's identical, seven wins against four defeats, but one person is going to come out ahead. Let's take a look at the replay action from round number three. And here we go, Dan Bam Epstel separates them. And then they're going back and forth. Liz trying to establish those strong punches. Right in, Chelsea trying to get those elbows on the inside. And again, they are just grinding back and forth. Leg kick, cross, punch, back court, push kick, everything is just, they're, they're throwing everything in there. Wow. Well, David, I just, I don't even know. It's tough to score. It's one of those fights where I would not want to be one of the the judges here, we potentially have another split decision on our hands. I just can't call it. I guess we're going to have to send it to Stefan Bonner here and have Stefan let us know what the judges saw as soon as get these gloves off Alexis Van. Here we go, Stefan Bonner with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. All three judges scored about 30-27. For your winner, fighting out of the blue corner, Liz Clacken! Well, it looks like that aggression, that forward pressure, the clinch, the knees, they did the job for Liz Wobby Clacken on the judges' scorecard here tonight, David. Oh, absolutely. You know what? She won all three rounds, but she won them marginally. You know, Chelsea Lexus Van put on a great fight, but again, it was that forward pressure that dominates in that punch, kick combination that gives Liz Swabby Clacken that win by unanimous decision over yeah, Chelsea Alexis Van. And I, I really uh, doubt that I'm going to see a, a frown on the face of Chelsea Alexis Van. I, she's the type to uh, keep smiling, win or lose. She just loves competing, and we're so happy that she could come down here and and get this experience here against Liz Lobby Clacken. Oh, absolutely. Fighting on a big stage like this, triumphant. In Las Vegas, coming all the way from Oregon. She put on a great fight, taking a fight on one week's nose, moving up two weight divisions. She should hold her head up very, yeah, very high. That they're great, great fight. 
Wow, David, those first three fights, barn burners, especially those last two, tough to decide there. As you said, even though Liz Swabby Clacken won that unanimous decision either round, couple strikes one way or the other, could have gone the other way. And now we are ready for our featured fight of our undercard. As you see on your screen here, Chris Paez making his way to the triumphant ring, fighting out of classic fight team, coming up with a record of 11 and eight over 20 fights there. A huge bank of experience. I know uh, being an IFS down there in Southern California, you see a lot of those shows, a part of those shows, you've seen him fight several times, correct, David? Oh, absolutely. He's got the footwork just like his brother. He's got angles, he's got style, he has movement. He'll punch and hit you from every different direction. He's an aggressive fighter, and he brings a lot of fight experience. This will be his 20th bout, and he's going to show that. But he still has his hands full. He's got his hands full because he's going to be taking on... Russell, Russell Bayerski, yes. Oh, man. Now, I actually trained with Russell at Combat Fitness with George Tsui up there at uh, Team Tsui, and then that's where uh, Charles the Rockstar Regis, who you've seen on previous shows, but Anthony, uh, uh, as you like to call him, uh, Chef Gucci McNasty ah. McNutt, has also been on several triumphant shows, and uh, those boys uh, have always have putting on a show. I don't think they've lost a show on triumphant yet, so if uh, Russell Bayerski can can carry on the tradition of Team Tsui here. Should be a good night for them, but I think it's the biggest challenge that Russell Bayerski has faced to date, standing across Chris Paez in the triumphant ring. Oh yeah, and there you see him bouncing up and down. He's excited to be here. Now what I noticed, uh, <coughs> I, Team Tsui, but they're more like Team Rockstar. They all seem to kind of adapt the big brother mentality of going in, having fun, putting on a show, and uh, and displaying great skill all at the same time. So, Russell's really the complete package. He's a strong 140, I'll tell you that. Has a similar fight style to the rock star, kind of comes forward, uh, is willing to take shots to give shots, uh, but I don't think he can risk taking too many shots standing in front of Chris Paez here tonight. This is a great stylistic matchup, worthy of our main event amateur portion here at Triumphant 7. And we give it to Stefan Bonner to introduce our main feature fight of the amateur. Ladies and gentlemen, this next fight of the evening is in the light welterweight division. Introducing first, Fighting out of the blue corner, he hails from Concord, California, undefeated with four wins and zero losses, weighing in at 140 pounds. Give it up for Russell Bayerski. And his opponent, fighting out of the right corner. Hailing from Fountain Valley, California, holding a record of 11 wins, 8 losses, weighing in at 140 pounds. Please welcome Chris Baez. You can tell Stefan gets excited. You can tell Stefan's a former fighter. <laughs> <laughs> He's bringing a lot of action and a lot, a lot of enthusiasm yeah, into like this he, ring, yeah. You know, yeah. we might say you see him pick a fight by the end of this, it looks like he's... He makes me so excited just to listen to him. No? Pumped up. I want to get in there. <laughs> but not against him. Definitely not against him. <laughs> not against you either, David. I've seen, I've seen your spin kicks, and I'm not trying to catch one of those to the side of my face. I'll tell you that right now. Well, fighters here are now sealing off the ring. Once again, sealing off the ring. Keep bad luck out. And to keep the good luck inside, you know. Chris Payas, his brother, Diego Payas, is fighting tonight on the professional portion of this card as the co-main event. Yes, it's uh, not the first time that the brothers have fought. I talked to Diego, and he said him and his brother have fought several times. It's always a trip. Always loves to have his brother in the corner. It makes camp that much easier because they're both trying to peek out at the same time. They're both at the same place in camp, and it makes the fight a lot easier to prepare for, David. Oh, absolutely. He has four brothers, four Pius brothers, all doing martial arts. 
And uh, there is sibling rivalry, man. You gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be up there with your brothers, man. Okay, we will see, I think, an entertaining fight. The two touch clubs. We are here at Triumphant Seven. I'm Brandon Kyle, alongside David Huey at the Samstown Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. Nice little kicks. Boy, Russ is coming hard with that body to the outside kick. Paez not phased with all that experience. I'm sure he's seen someone come hard in the beginning before, David. Double up jab by, by Russ there. Oh, nice body cross there by Russell. Oh, nice little hand combo upstairs by Paez. Nice jab by Paez, but eats a low kick for it. Another low kick. Well, Russell's got a wicked fast low kick there. Check that time by Paez. Only the second fight Russell's fought without shin guards. So we'll see, you know, you, you, you kick the wrong spot one time and that can really do some damage when you're not used to fighting with, without shin guards there, David. Oh, overhead elbow, stiff straight elbow comes over the top from Chris Payas. Chris trying to measure with that hand. Oh, nice hand combo landed by Payas there. Got Bearski to the corner. Oh, it looked like Bearski's feeling that leg kick there. Nice uppercut lands. Nice hook lands. Bearski slips out of that low kick. Bearski calculating. Paez looking for that low kick once again. You see, he's trying to use that low kick to make Bearski just think about it low and then come up with the hands. Ooh, almost missed that. Spinning elbow just barely missed there by Paez. That would have been major damage if it landed. Pushing Bearski back. Bearski tries to hold his ground, come back. Nice low kick by Bearski. 10 seconds left. Very opening round of this final fight of the undercard of Triumphant Seven. Nice low kicks exchanged there by both fighters. Ah, a little shake of hands, Chris. Not sure which corner he's in here. There we go. Back to the red corner for Chris Paez, the blue corner for Russell Bearski. And good action between both these fighters. They're trying to set their dominance, trying to be the alpha fighter in the first round. But they're exchanging leg kicks there, trying to make the opponent think low while they counter with their hands. You saw Chris Paez trying to do a little low kick and trying to catch. Bayerski coming in with the spin back elbow, almost caught him. But he's going to bait him with that low kick and try to use the hands. Let's take a look at some of the replay from the first round. We're going to see a battle of leg kicks here from this replay action. Yeah, back and forth. These boys are going with those leg kicks. They send it up with the hands, though. Nice. There's one for two, and then right back by Bearski, and we're going into the second round here. Featured fight of the undercard of Triumphant Seven, where Russell Bearski in the blue taking on Chris Paez in the red. Back and forth with hands and leg kicks. Seems to be a boxing leg kick battle so far here today, and both are equal in those skill sets, David. Well, they definitely are. You know, Bearski has the straighter the punches. Chris Paez, oh, with a nice spin back elbow. I guarantee you both of these boys are going to be feeling it in the morning. They are tearing each other's legs up. Great body shot by Paez there. And Paez almost throwing the overhead type of straight cross. And there's yeah. another one again. Bearski does, you know, he has that tall stance, head up high. Maybe Paez trying to sneak over that, that left hand and hit that overhand straight right there. He's scoring very well with that, Paez. He's coming over the top with that, scoring very, very well. Again, bearski has got the little short combinations that come in. And then he tries to finish his techniques with a leg kick as a period. One minute left in this round. Second round here of our final undercard fight between Russell Bearski, Chris Paez. Bearski in the blue, Paez in the red. They are going back and forth, David. Looks like both are starting to slow down just a little bit. Oy, oh, nice uppercut. Slip and rip from Paez. Bearski is, is eating him well, but oh, a huge elbow lands. Looks like Paez is finding the mark. Close to that spinning kind of elbow, turned into a back fist there. Back and forth action here tonight with these boys at 140. And I like uh, Russell, he's, he's just not phased by this. He just still marches forward, sticks to his game plan. Very well trained athlete. And Chris is just finding that right hand. 
He's finding his mark there. He's coming over the top. Huge wow. second round for Chris Paez landing. Nice overhand, nice elbow, but I see him breathing quite deeply for air in the corner here. You saw him start to slow a little bit there, David, at the end of that second round. I wonder if that high output in the first two rounds is starting to wear, but then you look over to the corner of, of Russell Bayerski. He's breathing deeply as well. These guys are putting so much out there. You'd have to be Olympic level athlete not to get tired. And even I think a, a Michael Phelps would be feeling it quite a bit if he was in the rounds like these boys are in here tonight. Let's take a the replay. Let's take a look at some of the replay from the second round. These fighters are squaring up and see Chris Bay has come over the top there using that hook and they exchange punches. And Russell finding that left hook and Chris Pay is finding the right cross. Boy, it is a battle of punches. And we are here in the third and final round. Russell Bearski in the blue taking on Chris Paez in the red. It has been a back and forth battle, David, of punches and leg kicks. It looks like Russell's corner told him, hey, you need to go out and win this round if you want to win this fight. But it looks like Chris Paez's corner told him the same thing. Yeah. And they're going back and forth, David. Wow. They are. They are rocking each other. They're going back and forth. They're making a vertical, tar vertical target out of each other. They're going to spin, and he gets it. Spin back fist. Glancing, though, but still effective scores. He's been throwing that several times here tonight, and it, it finally landed there. But he, ooh, a nice right hand from Bajerski. But boy, that spinning attack. He's really going to the well there. Almost hits the mark several times. If one of those hits the mark, it could change the fight. It could end the fight. And so he's really going for it here in this third round. Chris Paez is measuring it with that left hand. He's going to set up something. Tries to set up the sweep. Doesn't get it. Now he's marching forward, throwing more smothering punches. Bearski just trying to stop the action by throwing punches, trying to grab the arms. Another spin back fist by Chris Paez. Oh, and Bearski gives a spin back of his own. Short elbow over the top from Paez. Tit for tat over the elbow there. Oh, looks like the boys are abandoning punches. Knees and kicks are going all elbows here in this third and final round. Bearski pushing Paez, Paez backing up, trying to gain his wits. 30 seconds left in his third and final round. Another spin back technique, straight cross by Paez. Another spin comes up in too tight. Bearski really pushing, eating shots while he's pushing though. Oh, a nice hook by Bearski. Chris Paez goes for two elbows up and over. Oh, Paez just pushing so much hard being displayed here tonight in this third and final round of this amateur main event of the undercard portion. And the fight is going to the judges, David. Wow, man. Action like that, nonstop. And I like that in the three round fight, both fighters know they have to make a statement. You cannot start off the first round slow. You have to end the third round strong. And this one, man, oh man. What a great fight between these two warriors. You saw the spinning techniques from Chris Paez. The overhead straight right cross. Bearski landing with a strong left hook. And again, they start out leg kick for leg kick, just chopping each other out. I'll tell you what, David, it's... Let's take a look at some of the replay from our third and final round between Chris Pace. And here we go, a punch combination. See Chris trying to get his head in a little bit closer and sets up that spin, kind of hits him with the forearm, and then Bearski does the same thing, hits him with the forearm in return. Yeah, wow, what a third round, guys, what a fight. It looks like every one of these amateur fights has been one of those. I hate to sound cliche and say it again, but I'd hate to be the judges on this one, David. <laughs> you have your lucky quarter. Looks like we're going to need it again. A great action. Look, and look at these guys. They're both happy with the performance. They feel really, really good. Paez, so, yeah. Paez still making promo videos over here. <laughs> Looks like he's saying I have plenty of uh, juice left. You know, when you tr fight for triumphant combat sports, you cannot be happy. Look at the stage. Look at the lighting. Look at the platform. You are in Vegas. How can you not be excited? Win or lose, how can you not be excited to be here? Well, you see excitement on the face of Chris Paez. I see a little bit of concern on the face of Russell Bayerski. Just wants to know. You can tell he just wants to know. He knows it was a close fight. 
He knows this could go either way, and he just wants to get to that decision. Let's see who is going to take it here tonight in our amateur featured fight of the night to round out the undercard here before we move on to the professional portion of our card. And let's hand it up to UFC Hall of Famer, Stefan Bonner for the official. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. The first judge scores about 30-27. Judge two scores about 29-28. And judge three scores about 30-27. Introducing your winner by unanimous decision, fighting out of the Red corner, Chris Payes! Chris Payes' record improves to 12 and 8 on his 20th bout. Russell Bierski drops to 4 and 1, but hey, hold your head up high. A great, great fight between these two. I expect to see a lot more out of Russell Bierski. Chris Payes, I should see him turning pro anytime soon. This man has a lot of talent, a lot of game, an unorthodox style. But something that entertains the fans, both these fighters, warriors, hold their Ladies head up high. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the undercard portion of tonight's show. We're going to take a 15-minute intermission There's and then come warrior. back to join me for the feature fights of the evening. Let's take a look at the final replay action in this exchange from the third round. They guys, these guys are just going back and forth. You can see their punch thrown, that right hand from Chris Payas, trying to establish that dominance, that leg kick, that left hook from Russell Bayerski, scoring. Boy, these fighters really put it all on the line, trying to make that final statement. And bam, bang, bang. Taking shots, you know, I talked to Russell, I trained with Russell Bayerski. He had a short camp for this fight, came right off of his other fight, went right into a new camp. He knew he was coming against a really experienced fighter. He knew it was a challenge, but he wanted the challenge. So he let's took take it. a look at the first card from our professional version of the fight. Nate Adams from Tongsai Muay Thai taking on Miguel M. Afisi from Black House MMA. This is going to be a banger, guys. Yeah, we're going to take a short intermission here, and we are going to continue with the very first fight of our pro portion of the card. As David said, a real banger expected out of Nate Adams and Miguel M. Afisi. We are excited for this pro portion of the fight, guys. It's been a banger after banger so far in the amateur portion of the undercard. And as Triumphant usually does, delivering nothing but action-packed back and forth fights. And we expect nothing less coming out of the pro portion in just a short 10-minute intermission here. And we will be back, folks. Set your clocks. It's 15-minute intermission, and we will be back in 15 minutes. See, I told them 10 in case they, they thought oh, 15. Oh, in case they were late, okay. And then, you know, I don't want them to be late, so I wanted <laughs> to make tie sure. It's tie time, tie time. Yeah, we're on, we are on tie. If there's ties watching, they might be on tie time. They might not come back, and they'll catch the main event only. So we got to make sure they're here back early. Brandon we, Kyle and myself, Davey Huey, are here. Stay tuned for more Triumphant 7 here at Samstown, Las Vegas. Let's do it.
Amstown Hotel and Casino right here in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. I am Brandon Kyle alongside David Huey and a special guest joining us here in the booth tonight. He's a triumphant fighter. He is 3-1 and one in glory since he fought for us in triumphant. I am speaking, of course, no other than Charles the Rockstar Rodriguez. Charles, welcome to the broadcast booth for the first time here at a triumphant fight. We are so happy to have you, brother. Oh, I am so happy to be here, B. Mm -mm -mm. If I can't be in the ring, I want to be right here next to you guys watching these fights, getting excited for Triumphant 7, baby. Triumphant Muay Thai Series 7. We are here. We have finished with the undercard. It has been nothing but bangers so far tonight. We expect nothing more or less than that from coming up from Pro Card. Just a few short minutes, pro fighters are getting ready. The yeah, gloves are laced up, and we are ready to go short time here, folks. Under our professional portion, we have four bouts, four professional bouts here on Triumph at 7. Starting off with Miguel Imogisi taking on Nate Adams, and we're going to finish with the main event, Naripal Fairtex taking on Scott McKenzie. Man, this is for the IF, for the triumphant title belt. Super middleweight belt on the line, folks, tonight. When Scott Smash McKenzie takes on Nara Paul Fairtex in our main event. So happy to have Charles the Rockstar Rodriguez here. Dude, I got the best seat in the building. I'm super juiced to be a part of this. Thank you all so much for having me. Well, we're just minutes away. Starting Miguel. Egmontisi, all the way from Brazil, representing Brazil. And Black House MMA. There he is, I've seen this boy fight. Man, he is a tremendous powerhouse. A very clean Muay Thai techniques on fight last year, live against David Pacheco. Very, very good fight. Very talented fighter. And you're going to see some great action here tonight. Yeah, Elmo DC, I talked to him. He did some MMA for a long time, and he was dealing with all these different injuries associated with wrestling and the grappling portion. And he said, you know what? Maybe I'll stick to stand up for a while. And it sounds crazy to think that people hurling their limbs at you full speed with intent to knock your block off is safer, but he felt like the stand-up game was a lot safer for him. He, he enjoys it a lot more and decided he's going to focus on his Muay Thai and his stand-up game. And you can tell because he has put together a stellar record so far, being 2-0, undefeated, taking on Nathan Adams. And now, Charles, I know you have a little bit of uh, experience with Nathan Adams. I believe you fought him uh, before. Uh, what show was that you fought him on? What car? I can't remember oh, the promotion. Perhaps you've heard of it. Uh, Triumphant. Triumphant Muay Thai yeah, Series. Triumphant That's was right. The inaugural event. I got yes. to square off. I had the distinct honor of being in the ring with Nathan Adams, doing against me. And uh, I got to say, a uh, prime fighter, man. Very technical, very smooth, and I, I like his style. I like what he does. And it's going to be very interesting to see him working at this later weight class with him. Oh, it would appear that we have a little bit of an issue here. One of the ambulances that is here to shuttle the fighters back and forth from the hospital, if need be, out of injury, has left the building. And we are not allowed to continue with, with more fights until an ambulance has returned, just in case something happens. Uh, Triumphant is number one concern is the safety of the fighters, obviously. And if something like this happens, then we will wait for an ambulance to make sure if something else uh, major happens that we have medical assistance on deck. But Charles, let's talk to you for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Since your triumphant experience here, I believe you fought twice for us. Yes, and I got two, two triumphant of the guys that in. you've, uh, both of the guys that you fought on triumphant are fighting tonight. You talked about Nathan Adams and uh, tell us a little bit about that experience. Am I, am I jealous that they get to fight? Yes. Am I jealous of their opponents that they get to fight some of my favorite people? Absolutely. Well then, I want to fight those guys again. There was a freaking party throwing blows at their head, and they were throwing them at me. And uh, I I'm, I'm, but I'm very grateful to be right in this seat next to you guys, though. Wonderful. Oh, Speaking of Nathan Adams, out. here he is. It looks like the ambulance is back in the building, and we are walking Nathan Adams out to the ring. Judging by the look of Nathan Adams' face, I'm glad the ambulance are here because he looks Gabe, like he wants to do some damage. Yeah, we have Gabe Torres taking uh, great shots of all our fighters. It looked like Nathan wanted to take advantage of Gabe's talent there. He did stroke a pose for Gabe to get some good shots before his walkout. But, you know, it shows composure if a fighter takes his time to the walkout. He's not rushing it. He's enjoying it. 
I'm going to say that's from, from his experience of being a good-looking person. Like, when you know the camera's on, when you're just spent your life handsome, <laughs> you just well, know when the camera's on, you know how to, like, work those angles. He knows his lighting. He knows his angles. Experience you know, Charles, man. you and David know what it's like to be a good-looking person. <laughs> I, unfortunately, don't have that kind of experience. So I'll just have to take your word for it. All right, no, Charles? For sure, for sure. I'll put you up on game sometime. Nathan Adams walking in here. He's fighting out Tongside Muay Thai out of Eugene, Oregon. These fighters, this is a, a lot of fighters coming out of that camp. Chelsea Alexis Van came out of that camp. And Tongside and Tong Muay Thai producing a lot of great fighters. But he has his hand full this time because he's taking on Miguel MRTC. Miguel MRTC fighting out of the Black House MMA. This guy has fight experience in Brazil, in the USA, in Thailand, in Malaysia. He has a lot of fight experience under his belt, and he is very clean, very, very technical. You may not think that he, coming out of Black House MMA, has Muay Thai skills, but I saw him fight David Pacheco on push kick promotions. He did a great, great job dismantling his opponent. I had a really good conversation with him in the back at uh, Wayne's. He was telling me that this guy's an actual uh, striking nerd. He, he may have been uh, went to MMA, but he's a he's a puncher and kicker since he was about 10 years old. So this is what he loves to do, and I'm glad he got to find a home and triumph and to do it. Well, as I said, he, he found a passion for striking, and he, and he decided to go ahead and pursue it. And he is here for his third professional fight, taking on Nathan Adams, 0-1, making his second professional fight. Appearance here at Triumphant. The only other appearance was a, a loss to uh, a real jerk of a guy, Charles the Rockstar Rodriguez. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Great fighter. Great I'm fighter. not a fan. I know. I, you know, our, our third commentator here hates Charles the Rockstar Rodriguez. Talks I'm, crap about him constantly I'm just here. waiting to be impressed, honestly. Aren't we all? <laughs> Aren't we all, Charles? Well, there's our referee, Steve Magazzotti. So they're trying to get a little bit of information to see if the ambulance and the medicals are clear so they can start the bout again. Look at Nathan Adams. I mean, he looks like he's in a hammock on a Sunday afternoon here. The composure and the comfort. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, honor. boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Sam Sound Live for Triumphant Muay Thai. And it is time for the feature fights of the evening, brought to you by Muay Thai Attic and sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Introducing our timekeepers, Steve Espedito and Ernie Jagger Y. League ringside doctors, David Watson, Anthony Ruggiero Lee, and Damon Zavala. Executive director, Bob Bennett. And I'd like to invite you all now to rise and join me for our national anthem.
Watch us on the YouTube channel. What a beautiful national anthem. And now we are going to hand it to Stefan Bonner to introduce our preliminary card of our, our preliminary fight of our main card here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Eugene, Oregon, weighed in at 160 pounds. Please give it up for Nathan, the proof. Adams! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and weighed in at 160 pounds. Please give it up for Miguel Elmok DC! Might need a, we, have a, we needed a second ambulance in case Stephen Bonner passes out, <laughs> calling out the names. He gets so excited when he's doing it. You can see the passion. He loves it in there. Great to see him still be involved here in the fight game. Even though he's a retired UFC Hall of Famer, still has his hand in Muay Thai and MMA. Still an American psycho for sure. Yeah, definitely. And he's going to be joining us for our commentating on the main event. Yes, so. yes. So look forward to that. Calling a fight with Stefan. American Psycho Bonner. Both fighters are sealing the ring. See if uh, either of them choose to do a more extended white crew. Maybe Nathan Adams, I know, comes from a more traditional school. He might choose to do so. Now, Charles, what, what's your process before the fight? Are, are you, have you completed the white crew? Do you just seal the ring? You know, you know, what, what are you most comfortable with before the fight? I am terrified of the white crew because I feel like I'll get too into the dance and do a little too much hip motion and disrespect the, uh, the gods of Thai, and I'm really not trying to mess with that. I will save, seal the ring off, which is ceremonial. It helps calm my nerves, bring me centered, and uh, I like to show the respect to the culture as best I can. Well, I've seen you shake your hips, and you are absolutely right. You, you disrespect everybody in the room when you do so, so that's probably a good decision on your part, Charles. I'm holding it down, keeping it together. Holding it down, up, left, right. I've seen it happen before. <laughs> Someone could get hurt. And that's how he got his name, the rock star. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. You know, I'm surprised by the composure. Nathan Adams, you know, he's got a tough opponent in front of him. And uh, he just, you know, looks so relaxed in there. And uh, from the walkout to waiting for the ambulance and whatnot, he just stayed composed and relaxed. And I'm interested to see how he comes out in this very first round. And this oh, is professional Muay Thai, three three-minute rounds, punch, kick, elbows, and knees. The only thing that's padded is the gloves themselves. Yes, and we are back at the Sam's Town Hotel and Casino. Triumphant Muay Thai Series 7. It's me, Brandon Kyle. Ooh, we're here with David Huey and Charles and Rockstar Rodriguez. And this is Nathan Adams in the blue taking on Mikel. Elmo Tise in the red. Both starting very poised and just kind of calm. And you see the difference in the, in the professionals as uh, opposed to the amateurs. It's a lot a little slower pace early, but nice right hand lands for Adams there. Um, for the people at home who can't get a good hearer on that, I'm close enough to the ring where I'm hearing every hit. These boys are throwing, and no it, they have put on a good show for us so far. Look at the, look at the poise and the focus on Adams. And just in there taking and giving back. Nice little clinch exchange. We'll see who's stronger in the clinch here. Nice little up elbow from Elmo Kise. From my experience in being in the clinch with Adams, I was the uh, bigger opponent. We fought each other at 165. I'm glad to see him down at 160. But even at that weight, he was giving me problems. He is technical. He is strong. He is smart and balanced. And uh, I could definitely see him being really good against an opponent like this in the clinch. Ooh, both boys change leg kicks outside from Elmo Kise. Hey. Inside from Nathan Adams here. Boy, nice that little composure. pullback. Yeah. Nice little lead hook there. Look, just, I like the, the composure and the poise of Adams early in this fight. That's little. about the third overhand right Adams has thrown in this fight. Hasn't quite found his mark yet, but I could tell he's he's dialing it in. This first round, they get a good measure on each other. I'm looking forward to see that thing land. There's a fourth one. Yeah, you see Elmo Dice do the little knock. Nah, didn't hurt me. And in fighting, usually that means it hurts you a little bit. <laughs> Oh, good straight right hand from MLDC. Oh, yeah, nice. A little step switch knee. Oh, 
Amodise is trying to land that little no telegraph high kick from that lead leg, but Nathan Adams is quick on that pullback. And Nathan getting those elbows in right in the clinch position. He just gets right in before they go to full clinch. Working very good on that. Miguel trying to find his mark and distance. Oh. Coming short on that kick. Ooh, yeah. That Ooh, right hand finally hit. found his mark. Oh, um, I really think I'm that Amodise is it. feeling that right hand right now. Good Lord, Adams is looking really he is sharp in this first round. He is a blooded man. That's why they call him the proof. The proof is in the pudding right now, and Adams man. is providing the pudding on the oh, punches. Man. Got 30 seconds left in this first round of our first pro card. And a little smirk before he throws those fire bombs. Boy, Miguel can't seem to find that high kick. Not really setting it up with any punches, just kind of flicking it out there, and Adams able to see it coming out. Another right hand by Adams. Elmo Dice comes back with a one-two switch kick. Oh, Ooh, this is the high kick the again. The Matrix is real. And you know, I'm watching that round and I'm wondering how Nathan Adams is so calm and composed. And maybe he's thinking, you know, I've already been in there with the rock star. What's the worst that can happen, <laughs> right? Well, you see, you know, Miguel Elmo Dice is a half short shy of getting in his mark. And when Nathan Adams throws, he takes a small skip step in and able to find that mark. So he's scoring a little bit more effectively. Whereas Miguel, He's a little bit short on his kicks and punches. Let's take a look at the last 10 seconds here. Yeah, you get this nice exchange here. Both of them just decided to mix hands and feet together, throwing punches and kicks. But again, you see how Adams is slipping that high kick from El Moctise. And uh, El Moctise having trouble landing anything with the shins up high on Nathan Adams here, guys. Well, Jason Park inside the corner of Miguel MRDC asking for more, asking twos and threes before he throws a kick. So he wants a little bit more punch, a little more action, not ones and twos out of him. The rock star giving a little... Adam just gave me the thumbs up, let thumbs me know he's up. about to put on a good show for me personally, and I'm, I'm liking what that promise means. You know, I see a little fire in El Moctise. I don't think he liked how that first round went. I think his corner got up in... Uh, you know, in his head and said, hey, you need to do a little something here. And it looks like he's doing a little bit more already. He's taking that little short step in. Gets Ooh. caught into the uppercut. Yeah, he's, he took a short step into an uppercut right there, David. Nathan Adams is just staying right in front of him. Looked like Elmo Tise a little gun shy now on that back foot. Not sure, you know, he's, he's having trouble landing. And sometimes when you have trouble landing, it can, it can give you pause when you want to throw. looking to see good things out of Adams in that clinch. I know he's a very technical guy. I know he's hard to knock off of his balance. And as you're seeing, he's got ice cubes in his veins. The man stays cool and collected. And I do remember when he fought you, Charles, on, uh, on Triumphant One. You know, he, he was poised even through the onslaught. Uh, even when he, you know, wasn't, wasn't able to continue, you know, he, he still looked like he had his wits about him, but he just couldn't, he couldn't absorb that much punishment at a higher weight class. But you're right, at 160, he's looking strong, mean, and long all at the same time right now. But nice spinning back fist straight into the kick from El Mokdise. Uh, Nathan Adams' defense just seems to be rock solid. He's not letting anything open him up too much, and he's picking his shots really well. Definitely, definitely. Nice outside leg kick, kind of ca calf check. Half calf check there. And Nathan landing well with the punches, but eats a punch himself in that exchange. Again, Nathan Adams in the blue. I'm really enjoying this pairing between these two. We got a smaller uh, opponent in Nathan Adams against MLDC. And we also come in with a hybrid athlete who uh, loves striking, but is an MMA fighter. And I feel like Nathan Adams is very strict Muay Thai. So it's very interesting seeing, seeing, seeing the uh, styles blend together like this. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and we'll see if Amodise gets a little bit more aggressive, you know, sometimes oh, yeah. MMA fighters, when they're getting, uh, you know, outclassed when it comes to that tie style, usually they'll get aggressive, try to push back and get into a kind of a dirtier clinch, but Amodise is uh, satisfied standing it and playing this tie march game, and, and he's starting to do a little bit better here now in that second round, guys. You can see him using his punches, trying to set up that kick a little bit more, but I like to see his rhythm a little bit faster. He's, he's, he's a little bit slow. He's almost like he's still back in the first round. Yeah, he's definitely absorbing his uh, coaches, cornering him very well. They had told him to set him up with those hands. I see him implementing that well, and that's a good sign of a very cerebral fighter, a guy who's got good ring mind, good yeah, focus. The ability to, to adapt inside the fight is, is, uh, is uh, that's what, what kind of separates the uh, professional from the amateur ranks. Yeah, they're both looking very professional right now. Ten seconds left in this second round. A little bit better round for El Moctise here. 
Short round. I know these guys are wanting to start throwing right about now. I hope they show up for it. Again, a little one-two switch kick from Elmo Dise to end that second round. Puts his hands up. Looks like he's feeling a little bit better about his performance, David, in that second round. Yeah, you know, I like to see Miguel just really pick up his pace a little bit more. Set up those punches, land that kick, and don't give so much time for Nate Adams to set up what he's doing. Nate Adams is fighting very, very well. He's leaning a little bit forward. He's getting those punches in, and when they go into the clinch, he's landing those elbows inside. So you got to shut down the rhythm of Nate Adams, and by doing that, Miguel Emotisi has got to move a little bit more. got to set up, got to punch a little bit higher. Let's take a look at some of the replay from the second round here, and we see Miguel there landing that hook and using those punches to set up that kick. And again, Nate Adam going inside, landing a few elbows before getting into that full clinch position. A great fight between these two warriors. This is the third and final round. Will Miguel turn it on in this third and final round? Could be one round and one round apiece here. It really, I think it just kind of might come down to this third and final round. Like you said, David, it's me, Charles and Rockstar Reyes, David Huey. This is the third and final round of our very first pro fight of Triumph and Muay Thai Series 7. It has been a close fight so far. Nathan Adams came out very strong. Amodise had a better second round. And now both these boys, I think, know how important this third round is as far as taking the victory home tonight at Triumph at 7. I feel everything is on the table right now, this third round. I could give the uh, first round Nathan Adams just on uh, being technical and very composed. I give uh, Emil DC the second round with just the onslaught that he was throwing on Adams. Adams a little more defensive during that round, and that's not going to win you the round. So uh, this third round, it's going to be interesting to see how they uh, pull it together. What are they, what are they willing to do to win this fight? Spin back kick by Nathan Adams, and he gets countered from a hook cross combination, kick combination. And they know like they have to turn it on. Adams is, uh, is thinking a little bit more and, and has a little bit more of a look of concern in his face. I think he understands the importance. Sense of urgency on Adams' face. El Moktise as well coming forward, throwing nice body body. Misses that high kick again though, but maybe Adams oh, is starting to elbow. wear a little bit from that, that earlier round of just pushing, pushing, pushing. Doesn't seem to be able to push the same way he did in that first round. El Moktise's corner is calling for elbows. They want him to keep striking up top. He was looking successful and aggressive with it. I'd like to see some more of that myself. Oh, a little faint from Adams. Looks like he's trying to set up something. El Motise setting up that high kick a little bit. Ooh, hoo, hoo. boys, they just that barely both missed those right hands. But left hook lands for El Motise. They're coming back and forth. One two combination by Miguel. Lands on the mark. Nate Adams is trying to pepper back. I'm liking the level of aggression we're seeing from Nathan Adams right now. He's turning up just a little bit more. I want to say, woo, spinning 10, 20 percent more of that anger coming out of him right now is definitely going to be able to help him cinch this third round. Oh my boys and girls, this is a banger of a third round. Back and forth they go. El Motise is really pushing, but Nathan Adams slaps him with top. that spinning heel kick. And just says no. Oh, thank you. He says no. Just a foot. He said no. And you could you could hear the slap. If that would have been heel, it could have been lights out for El Motise. But it, not just the top of the foot there, but definitely got his attention. I'll tell you that for sure. Feeling very fortunate that Adams didn't throw that to me in our fight. That yeah. could have been painful. That could have been a uh, very, very painful. Nice little jump knee. Oh, we're gonna start pulling out the tricks right now. Oh, El is pushing. Fighters hard know the time is getting short. Round. Yep, you know that. Hey, we're gonna see some flash, ladies and gentlemen. El Motise is really turning it on here, and then you, you, talk, you talk about the athleticism of El Motise, and you're seeing that raw athleticism coming out. He's just being able to push. Ten seconds left, third and final round of this first fight of our pro portion of the want it. The, Both want it bad. Boy. Still loving that right hand from Adam. That spinning Boy. elbow, and Tom Sai's known for.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. Judge Mark Smith scores this bout 29 28. Miguel. Judge John Baker scores the fight 29 28. Adams. And Judge Kunichiro Kemijo scores about 29-28 for your winner. By split decision, fighting out of the blue corner, Nathan the Proof Adams. Nate Adams takes the win by split decision over Miguel M. Off DC. One point, one round separates them from that win. A great fight between these two warriors. Man. Three rounds of hard-hitting Muay Thai action. Nate Adams there happy for taking that split decision. Miguel Imatisi hangs his head up very high. A great fight between them. We're splitting hairs. We're going to send it to Brandon Kyle for an interview with the winner, Nate Adams. As soon as you get his picture taken, we'll hear comments from our winner, Nate, Nathan Adams. We are here with your winner, Nathan the Proof Adams. Good Lord, what a battle that was to open up the pro portion of this triumphant seven card. Now, we were noticing on the broadcast, you came in with such a poise. You were so relaxed. You walked out. You took your time taking pictures. You're leaning on the ropes. You know, what, what was your mindset? How were you so relaxed coming into that fight? You had like some kind of special confidence. What was that all about, Nate? Um, I've never actually ever fought to my potential. I still don't think I did tonight. Uh, in every single fight, I've learned a little bit more. Charles, the guy over there, taught me a hard lesson. My last fight, what's up, Charles? <laughs> and uh, you, you learn, dude, you, uh, you win or you learn. And the more you accept what you did wrong, the faster you grow. And uh, I came in here believing in myself, believing in my skills and believing in the process. My coach, my corner, my teammates, and uh, still don't think I was peaking, but I was, I was there, I was present in the moment, I was enjoying it. Well, you definitely look great in there. Like we said on the broadcast, the proof is in the pudding, yeah. and you brought the pudding here tonight, Nathan. Now, it took a little while for you to get back in the ring. You fought Charles some time ago on the first triumphant. Um, now you've made your return. What are you thinking going forward in the future? You know, are, are you want to try to stay active and get right back on there with such a great performance here tonight? Uh, you know, in the moment, absolutely. I say, yeah, let's do it later tonight. Let's do it tomorrow. Um, I know I have somebody right down front who's down to do it later tonight if you are, so... Okay, hey, uh, post party first, then we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, no, so I'm gonna sit, sit back, talk to my family after this, uh, talk to my coach, and we'll game plan. You know, um, I think the greatest waste on this planet is like a waste of potential and talent. If uh, if I just go hide under a rock right now, I'm kind of wasting it. So I'd rather inspire people, be be it Muay Thai or anything. You know, you just get out there and perform, and you do it. So. That's awesome. Well, you know what? With a performance like that, we'd love to see Nathan the Proof Adams back again. Let's hear it one more time for that wonderful victory here tonight. Thanks a lot, Nate. And there you have it. Nate Adams takes a split decision win. 29-28 on two of the judges' scorecards. 29-28 going to one of the judges' scorecards for Miguel Imaltiski. But in the end, Nate Adams comes out with that split decision win. A very, very happy winner. But we have big boys coming up next. Big, big boys. Johnny say, Parson is going to take on John Herney. Color me biased, but I'm really happy to see Nathan Adams get his hand raised in there. I know he was a great opponent. He was an awesome guy in the ring, out of the ring, and I'm really glad to and see him back And here we go for our there. next bout. Johnny Parsons fighting out of the syndicate MMA, taking on John Herney from the Combat Sports Academy. This is going to be a banger. Big boys are going to make this 20-foot ring seem like it's a phone booth. These guys are going to be rocking each other with wrecking balls. This is the demolition derby of Muay Thai. Don't blink, guys. It could be lights out any moment. All right, we hear our fans coming out. Everybody's excited with the anticipation because there we see Johnny Parsons stepping out, greeting his fans. Excited to be here. 
I know someone who fought Johnny Parsons. I'm trying to think who it was. A real jerk fought Johnny Parsons on a triumph of a floor. No one even talks about that guy anymore. Oh, it was Charles Christ Rodriguez sitting right next to me. I totally forgot. Oh, yeah, that guy, yeah. He got lucky that night. Yeah, and you can hear the crowd because you got a local Vegas boy here and Johnny Parsons. He is ready to make his return to the triumphant ring against Big Sexy John Herney. I am excited about this fight tonight, gentlemen. We with saw Johnny. John Herney in a potential fight of the year, shoot, fight of the decade fight with Stephen Bob and Chuck for that dual amateur title on Triumphant 5 last October. And uh, he is eager to make his professional debut here at Triumphant 7, guys, against Johnny Parsons. And that is not an easy task, I'll tell you that right now. Johnny Parsons fighting also Muay Thai and mixed martial arts, but he has his hands full right now because there is the Big Sexy. Big Sexy coming out of CSA, sporting an Eddie Abasolo shirt, also a CSA fighter. Those boys train a lot together, learn a lot from each other. Now, Big Sexy, he's fought at heavyweight. He's fought at cruiserweight. He's down at 185 now to that low cruiserweight of his. And he's looking lean, mean, and he is ready to bring it here tonight against Johnny Parsons. We are excited to see it. So Big Sexy's got nice footwork for a big guy. You'll see in here. He's pretty light on his feet. Uh, you know, for a bigger guy, he can move and stick like we've seen in uh, that Bob and Chuck fight last time. And uh, we're excited to see because we know Johnny Parsons has a lot of that movement, and tricky in and out, left and right, switching stances, kind of disguising it. He'll step back, he'll throw a strike, and uh, you just never know what's coming from the man, as, as Charles learned in their fight together. That is a uh, complicated individual. Oh, I, I ladies like and over. gentlemen, the next fight of the evening is in the cruiserweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, coming to have you from Dublin, California. Making his professional debut. He weighed in at 185 pounds. Please give it up for John Big Sexy Harney. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Hailing from Las Vegas, Nevada. Posting a record of three wins. One loss and weighed in at 185 pounds. Please welcome Johnny the Paradox Parsons. The Paradox is right. When I remember him fighting you, Charles, you would come forward, he would step back, and next thing you know, he's coming with an overhand left, he's coming with a knee, he's coming with a kick. It took you a while to kind of catch a beat on him. Let's go to the tail of the tape here. We have Johnny Parsons boasting a three and one record, 27 years old. He's gonna have quite an age advantage over the 36 year old John Parsons. Parsons is, I mean, sorry, John Herney. Parsons is only 5'10", John Herney a little bit taller, 6'1". This is the pro debut for John Herney. John Herney was a little upset. Guys, I'm gonna admit to you, he, he contacted me, he said, what did you do to my hair? He said, you cut my hair. Who's photoshopping my picture here? He says, I don't usually sport the Dan Aykroyd flat top, but, uh, but, but he was getting a lot of flack on Facebook for it, and he, he's a little upset he wants to earn it here tonight. Now, fighters coming to the center ring for their final instructions. This fight scheduled for three three-minute rounds. 185 pound weight division. In this corner, Johnny Parsons corner saying, be smart, be safe, be savage. The three S's. <laughs> and we have another CSA fighter, the final CSA fighter representing the, the camp here. Second pro fight. Here we go, we are live! The second pro fight, Triumph and Muay Thai Series 7. I'm Brandon Kyle alongside Charles the Rockstar Rodriguez. I don't know why David my heart Chewy. is already racing. Johnny Parsons tries to catch kick, unable to secure it. John Herney moving, trying to fire off the leg kicks. Comes up high, 
with that kick. Oh, nice jab by the Paradox O with the overhand. You just never know what angle he's coming from. You know, he just, he'll throw unorthodox strikes. He'll throw when that you technically shouldn't throw. And that's what kind of gets uh, people off, off feet. I talked to John Herney before the fight. He said he wants to get in and out with the movement. He doesn't want to let him clinch. He thinks he might try to clinch up when he gets close. But it doesn't look like Parsons is trying to clinch. Trying to land big hit, but nice head kick by, by John Herney here. Now, Charles, I know you do some sparring uh, uh, with John Herney, and, and uh, you know, you, you kind of have a similar style here. Both of them like to move. Both of them are good left and right. So we're expecting to see a little battle of position here. Well, both these men are very dangerous because they're super light on their feet, but they will come at you with amazing power at any moment. Just like that, John Her John already seems like he got her on that lead leg by Parsons. Paradox inside leg kick. Oh, and here comes in rushing. The Paradox is bringing a plethora of punches here. Nice outside leg kicks. Leg kicks are oh, he big right hand by Hurt. Oh, I think that hurt Parsons. that hurt Parsons. That hurt Parsons and Johnny feels it. He's supposed to in the water. He's going forward. He's landed shots, guys. He's got Johnny up. He might see a standing eight count, but no. Parsons walks off the ring like a cowboy at a gunfight. He wants to keep on coming forward. John Herney has the weight of God's judgment in his right hands, and all that thing needs to do is touch you, and you could get hurt. Ah, uh, but Johnny Parsons coming right back with a 3-2. Both of them laying there on, on Big John Herney. You see Johnny Parsons trying to stay the center of the ring. Here he gets kind of just pushes John Herney out. John Herney tries a high kick, comes on the arm of Johnny Parsons. Johnny Parsons tries to go overhand cross. That flipping high kick from John Herney comes out of nowhere. John has his hands low in the corner. I, I, I'm a little bit concerned about that because, you know, the Paradox likes to throw those overhands. You keep the head high, the hands low. They might be looking at one come right at you there like a cruise missile. Just like that right there. Lands, but Big Herney's able to kind of slide out of the way. Blocks the kick from Parsons. Parsons kind of waiting his time here, looking for shots. Again, Absorbing. he's playing the center of the ring. He's playing the center ring, not moving so much. He's throwing a little bit more energy. But then we see Herney using that footwork, just trying to slip in and out, trying to find his mark. One of the most dangerous things about John Herney is for that size, he moves like a feather. Yeah, he does. He's, uh, he is nimble but powerful at the same time. And you're seeing that come to play. But I tell you what, Johnny Parsons, with 10 seconds left in this opening round, is uh, landing, hits a big shot. Oh! Huge spinning elbow! And that might be the fight, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, gosh, that hurts bad. The count is going down. Oh, Parsons, though. Is he pulling a, a He's Tyson Fury? Oh, looks like he, uh, he's gonna count it. Fighter cannot be. He wants him to step forward. He's looking at his feet, trying to hold still. That's Man. it, that's the end of the oh round. Oh my God, guys, Johnny Parsons. With just seconds, with just seconds. What a spinning elbow lance. Johnny takes his time to recompose himself. Doctor's coming out, he's taking a close look at Parsons. John Concepcion is in there, splashing water on his fighter's face. You can see the, the, the seriousness of his corner. They know they gotta wake Parsons up here. He's... Wow, let's take a look at that knockdown on replay. Here we go, fighters are in the clinch. Our referee breaks them apart. Final seconds remain, sidekick gets caught, and then Boom. that spin back elbow off that release on that catch kick. Boom, is right. I have a lot of up-close personal experience with that spinning, same spinning elbow from actually a Tongsai fighter, uh, one of Nathan Adams' um, teammates. And those things are not fun to be a recipient of, I can tell you. I'm very impressed with Johnny Parsons yeah. getting back up, dancing it off. The doctors will let him go. Let's see how he does in round two. Yeah. The rock star received an elbow like that in an amateur fight and took an impromptu nap. Johnny Parsons took a little bit of a rest, but got up and looks like he's bouncing. He's got a switch back about him and he's coming hard. Oh, but a nice left hand. Parsons always looking like it doesn't phase him though. John Herney's feeling good, got a little bounce in his step. Ooh, uh, big high kick. Another high kick from Big John. Sex, the big sexy John Herney is Four head kicks with in a kick. row. Jesus, Charles, what is going on tonight? I'm I'm so glad I'm safe next to you guys right now because being in any one of those men's position is not a good place to be right now. But you know what? The paradox is walking forward, looking to counter it. And he's got power, guys. He's got power in both hands, and you never know. One shot could change this whole fight. It looks like a big, sexy John Herney is feeling real comfortable in there right now. John Herney in the blue. But John Parsons doesn't have his balance quite yet. He hasn't fully recovered from that knockdown. You can see he's a little bit wobbly. His foot's not underneath him. 
still walking forward, still has that intense in his eyes. Oh, he's playing possum really well. He's doing, he's using this time to recover, and he's doing an effective job of doing that. You know, John Hearn, he's showing that he's ready for the pros, keeping composure, not rushing in there, still trying to pick him apart from the outside. Playing tricky, real tricky games. Oi! Look at John just throwing plethora of kicks at, at uh, Parsons here. And those kicks, those high kicks are so long. I mean, he's got the reach on them, and he can stand and hit you from halfway across the ring. And he's got impeccable balance every time he throws one. He's ready to throw another one right after that. Not a lot of fighters can do that. I would hurt myself attempting. Yeah, like we said, he's, he doesn't fight like a bigger fighter. He fights like a, like a lightweight fighter, but he's coming in at cruiserweight at 185 here for this fight. Okay, Johnny looks like he's recovered now. His feet is underneath him. Looks like he's got his balance back. Johnny's got a lot of experience in the sport, and he knows how to work away off uh, from being hurt, and he's definitely showing that composure right now. Any point in time, I'm waiting to let that Cobra strike out and just start going after him. I want to see a lot more of that leg kick from him for sure. He's been a lot of success in that in the first round. Got a minute left in this second round. It's been a banger so far as John Herney in the blue takes on Johnny Parsons in the red. Johnny Parsons got knocked down by a vicious spinning elbow in the first round, but he's got his wits back about him, and he's coming forward, and he's looking to press. Johnny's got to work that low kick. He's got to shut down those legs of, <coughs> of John Herney. He's got to shut down those high kicks. Got to work those legs. Got to chop those legs. Johnny Parsons got some big legs, too. If he lets those land, he could definitely stop the movement of Johnny Par uh, Johnny uh, John Herney. Oh, Again with that, that high kick. Whoa, spinning kick. Oh, Parsons got one, too. Yeah, yeah that's said, right. Oh, yeah. For tat. oh, you got one, so check this out. Lands to the arm, but still with a lot of power coming behind it. Oh, John thought about it. Big John Ernie dancing, dancing in the ring, hands low. Looking like he's trying to set up maybe another spinning attack, drawing Johnny in. Comes forward, another spinning heel kick. Oh, John, Johnny Parsons comes with the spinning heel kick. I, you know what? <laughs> Johnny Parsons could have easily taken that second round. But you know it was a 10-8 round for John Herney in that first round because it was such a vicious knockdown. So even though Johnny Parsons might have taken that round, even if he wins this third round, still not going to give the victory in the fight. So he's going to be looking for the, for the either the knockdown or the kill, right, David? Oh, absolutely. You know, right now if he wins this round, it still could be just a draw. So he's got to put on some heat there. It looks like he's recovered. It looks like he has his feet underneath him. I mean, he was throwing spin kicks at the end. I know he had his balance back. And we are listening into the corner of Johnny Parsons. A lot less uh, concerned than they were at the end of the, uh, second, uh, the first round there, but we're going into the third round, and uh, looks like they're a lot happier with Johnny's performance. Johnny Parsons in the red trunks. Well, we now we're about replay. to start the third round here. And then we have a series of high kicks there by John Herney. But then we're going back to this third and final round here. Oh, good left hook from John Herney. And now he's sticking and moving. He looks like Muhammad Ali in there right now. Here we go back live. Sorry about that, guys. Nice overhand right from Parsons. You know, the thing about spinning kicks, they take a lot of energy. And, and John Herney's thrown a lot of them. And you just wonder when it's going to start to wear on his cardio, possibly. Even though he moves like a lighter guy, that's the thing. When lighter guys move like, or bigger guys move like lighter guys, often it takes a lot of energy from them. And, and we'll see if John Herney has the stamina to be throwing strikes like that and moving the way he is and still continue to produce heavy strikes later in the third round. And with this being his pro debut, this is his first time doing three-minute rounds. So this could be a new experience for him. Very true, Charles. Good point. We will see if the nine minutes is going to weigh in differently than the six minutes that the amateur do if they go three rounds. Uh, a guy like Parsons definitely saved enough energy for a third round and he knows how to press somebody at times like this. If he keeps landing that right leg kick, that could be a big detriment to John Hardy's game plan. And I like to see Johnny Parsons land that leg kick and follow up with the hook afterwards. You know, make him think up and down. Ooh, another, another leg kick. Inside leg kick. Johnny is eating up the right leg of John Herney, I mean the front leg of John Herney right now, and it is starting to wear and tear, but John Herney's still got the movement going, he's in and out, but John has not been able to uh, land any bigger strikes since that spinning elbow knockdown in the first round, and it's been all Parsons that right forward. leg again, beautiful from Johnny Parsons. Another leg kick drops. He's starting to show him the power of the paradox. Here we 
go, guys. About halfway through this third and final round. Got big, sexy John Hurdy in the blue. The Paradox. Johnny Parsons in the red. Nice spinning. Heel kick right to the belly of John Herney. And the 87th head kick from John Herney. And an overhand right by Parsons. Parsons got it. He's got his bearings back. He's got his distance. He's got his timing down. Is it too late? I think if Johnny Parsons keeps pressing this way, we might be able to see a draw from this round. But with this kind of power in the ring, we could see a 10 8 from either one of them. Yeah, you know, it looks like it's about to play. Short time here in this third round. Johnny's really chopping. It looks like Big John Hurt is starting to feel the wear and tear of those leg kicks. Another spinning kick from Parsons. Parsons going for go. He's got Big John in the This is the kind of fight we can see. Oh my god! They're going back and forth here. The crowd's screaming. A catch him. A little trip here. Ten seconds left. Can he finish him? This is why we come to the triumphant fight. Ten seconds. Here comes Parsons. Big John. No knockdown counted. That's not going to count as a knockdown. Good lord. What? Hey, beautiful oh, valley of effort this from house, They man. are on fire. Everybody's standing up. Hey, this is triumphant. A great fight. I might have to interview two here because we might have a draw. That is really so far the fight of the night, I have to say, in my book. And, uh, you know, I don't know. If it's a 10-8 for, for John Herney in the first round and, and uh, Johnny Parsons wins the next two rounds, could yeah. be a could be a, a draw in the judges' scorecard. I would have to I find would, out. I would not mind seeing the rematch. On I, that I'm ball. down for that. Triumphant eight. We're back in in May here. You, you guys, uh, quick turnaround? Question mark. Great work by both these warriors. And you know, a great pro debut by John Herney. I mean, he paced himself really well. Found his mark. Found his range. Was able to work a vertical target with leg kicks, high kicks. Just a great, great job for John Herney making his pro debut. Oh, he did not look like an amateur at all. Here's that last 10 seconds of round. We're going to see a crazy exchange from two fighters who won it the most. Spin back kick comes up as a miss. Johnny Parsons just trying to yep. rally inside. John Herney throwing punches in return. Skimming off the top there, catches the leg kick. He comes down. Wow. Johnny Parsons knew what time it was. It was uh, it was time to throw. It was a short time, and he had this he had this moment to make a statement, and he decided to do so. And it was a beautiful thing. Great, great job! And these fans here are just so excited. A lot of smiling faces in the audience in appreciation for this fight. Wow! Three rounds of professional action between Johnny Parsons and John Herney in the 185-pound weight category. John Herney scoring. A knockdown by spin back elbow over Johnny Parsons in the first round. But in a great rally back and forth. Let's take a look at a second replay. Let's take a look at the first. Let's take a look if this was a knockdown at all. That was a punch and kind of hard to read. Kind of like hard to barely read. Barely missed John Herney's jaw. Take a look again. It was not scored as a knockdown. He throws a hook. Ladies and ah, gentlemen, let's call, hear it for these cruiserweight the warriors. Okay. That, wasn't a, that wasn't a drop. Unbelievable action. And after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Mark Smith scores about 29-27. Judge Adelaide Bird scores about 29-27. And Judge Patricia Jarman scores about 29-27. For your winner by unanimous decision, fighting out of the blue corner, John Big Sexy Herney. And there you have it, John Herney wins his professional debut, taking 29 27 and all three judges' scorecards. What a great fight! A great rally by Johnny Parsons at the end. A great job. Let's send it to Brandon Kyle for their interview with our winner, John Herney. All right, guys, we're here with your winner. We call him Big Sexy, but after tonight, we might have to start calling you Fight of the Night, John Herney, because this is the second time in your triumphant ring. Last time you were in here, I think you put on a Fight of the Year performance. You're in here, first round, you land a devastating spinning elbow. He's looking up at the ceiling. What are you thinking after you land that elbow, John? Uh, <laughs> uh, 
I was thinking stay down, but man, he was tough. Uh, he got up, and we had to do two more rounds of that. So, man, hats off to Jonathan. Man, that's uh, honestly the toughest opponent I've ever faced my entire career. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Uh, we saw him stand up, shake it off, come out. You use a lot of movement. You're a big guy. We were talking about on the broadcast how big you are, how quick you are on your feet, though. But that can use a lot of energy. And he started really chopping those legs in the second round. Yeah. Was that third round, was that movement starting to stall out? Were you having trouble moving? Because I know he was attacking that leg. You're a big guy. You're moving a lot. How were you feeling at the end of that third round? Uh, you know, I, I felt good. The, 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 the problem was I, I definitely, definitely broke my hand in the first round. Yikes. So I did not throw one right hand the rest of the fight, so it limited my weapons. That's why I was moving to the left the entire time, just trying to use my jab. I couldn't even, couldn't even do nothing with so we So yeah, we, we noticed you were throwing multiple kicks, and we, were, you know, we weren't sure if that was part of the game plan, but it seems like you might have injured your hand and kind of had to rely on other limbs in order to, to take that win tonight. Just trying to keep him away, use my long-range weapons, hoping he's not picking up on that where my right hand was was hurting. I think he did in the third round. He started chopping my left leg when I was moving to the left. I knew he knew. Just, you know, we had to just battle it out. Well, you know, David said, man, I wouldn't mind watching uh, uh, these two go at it again. I said, um, we're here in May, maybe again, but it looks like you're going to take some time to recover. Congratulations. Let's hear it. Pro debut victory for big sexy John Harney, everybody. Let's take a look at the replay action. From that first round, that spin back elbow knockdown action, these fighters go into a clinch. Our referee breaks them. And there we have John Hardy throwing that side kick and then boom, lands that spin back elbow in the final seconds of the first round to make that a 10-8 round and actually to seal the deal for this fight. This is Johnny why you are rallying it, back. And gentlemen. This, right here, you get to see highlight real action in real time. You're gonna be replaying that video for the rest of this man's career. You got to see it live here on Triumph at 7. That's right. That's going to be something for Instagram for sure, man. Great, great job. Trying to get out of that catch kick, landing that spin back elbow. Boom. You know, Johnny Parsons rallied back very, very well. Not able to seal the deal and catch up in time. And in the end, John Herney wins by unanimous decision. 29, 27, and all three judges' scorecards. Coming up, we have Diego Payas taking on Ethan Quachon. Boy, this is going to be a banger as the co-main event. We said before, Styles makes fights. This is an eclectic style matchup between these two young warriors. I'm excited about this. For anyone impressed with uh, John Herney's performance, they call him Big Sexy for a reason. And he said for anyone who was interested in finding out why, feel free to DM him. He's up for uh, street taco dates. And he's one of the baddest dudes coming out of CSA Dublin. So hit those DMs, get those tacos. <laughs> Okay, our fighters are making their way. The lights are coming down for our co-main event. Diego Payas taking on Ethan Quachon. My name is Davey Huey. I'm sitting alongside Brandon Kyle and the rock star himself, Charles Rodriguez. <laughs> and there we see Diego Payas walking to the ring. A lot of confidence in this guy. This guy, I call the Matrix of Muay Thai. He's got the footwork, he's got the angles, he's got the speed. He will hit you out of nowhere. But he's putting himself against one tough warrior, Ethan Quachan. Diego Pérez dedicates his fight to his mother. His mother passed away several years ago, right before he went and fought. They look at her, his mom's picture every time they before they walk out to the ring. This is dedicated to his mom. That's a beautiful sentiment. I love to see the uh, heart of the Warriors that we get to have displayed in front of us, not just their skills, but who they are as people. That's not us, yeah. All right. We've seen Diego Payas walk out. Now we're going to see Ethan Quachon fighting out of the blue corner. He's brought a lot of fans here with him, training under the legend himself, Johnson on the Woodman, Vertex. 
Ethan Wachong coming off a win at the Pini Stadium in Thailand, the Mecca of Muay Thai in Bangkok. He's gonna bring that experience here today as he puts this on the line against Diego Paez. Yeah, both fighters streaking. I visited Ethan Kachon at Johnson's brand new gym in San Francisco, right in the heart of the city. Beautiful facility. And what I noticed first about Ethan is he has a different air about him. When he used to train, when he used to fight, he was almost uh, too focused, almost overthinking, he said. He said he went to Thailand, he experienced the culture, the way they train, the, the happy nature that they train with, and, and the relaxed nature that they fight with. And he really learned uh, valuable lessons out there, and, he, and he's eager to bring them home. And uh, he said he totally changed his whole training and changed his whole style. And, and he realized that, uh, you know, he, you know, he's got to trust his skills. He's got to let him fly. But uh, talking with his coach, he also realized that, you know, in America, they judge things a little bit differently, and aggression can weigh a lot more than it might in Thailand compared to clean technique. And it's important that he, uh, he mix it up a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, the next bout of the evening is in the featherweight division. Introducing first, Fighting out of the blue corner from San Francisco, California, with two wins, two losses. He weighed in at 126 pounds. Please give it up for Ethan Kajan. <laughs> and his opponent, fighting out of the red corner from Fountain Valley, California with a record of three wins, one loss, and one draw. He weighed in at 127 pounds. Please welcome Diego Paez. Extremely excited about this fight, gentlemen. This is going to be another potential fight of the night. I know after that performance by the Johns, Johnny Parsons and uh, Big Sexy John Herney in that last fight, might be tough to to beat that out. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape here. Diego Paez, three one and one. Those three victories have come out of his last three fights. He went one and one to start his pro career, got on track, and has rattled off three victories in a row. Catch on is two and two. He, both of his defeats coming here, very close fights. Again, in marginal victories uh, by his opponents. There, either either fight could have gone either way but he was unable to pull out the victories in those fights. But that Lumpini Stadium champ, or that Lumpini Stadium victory has given him a lot of confidence coming back to America to fight here for Triumphant Seven. Well, as a coach, th both of these fighters have stepped across the ring from one of my fighters, and I know their styles very, very well, and this is a stylistic matchup. This one, if style makes fights, this is one of them right now. Here we see Ethan Quachon performing the ceremonial Y crew, paying respects to his teachers, now, fighters usually seal off the ring to prevent bad luck from entering to keep the good luck inside. They go over the ropes when they enter the ring, and it's because they want to keep their heads up high. They don't want their feet lower than their heads. In Thai culture, the feet is considered very, very dirty. The head is holy, so they don't want their heads lower than their feet. Now, after paying Y crew, paying respects to their teachers, it could be any god they have, you know, whatever religion, parents, teachers, and so on. And this part, he's walking back to his ring, pouring a very short Ram Moy. Ethan Quachong taking on Diego Paez. All right, gentlemen, give it good clean, fair fight. Obey my commands, protect yourself at all times, and hook him up. It's very indicative that Ethan Quachong is doing something so traditional because his style, when you see him in the ring, very traditional tie, very strict, very textbook. He's very good at it, very cool, very composed. You know, and I, like I was saying, I was talking to, uh, to him, and he's, him and his coaches have realized that, you know, um, he has to be, be able to uh, push forward and feel the fight a little bit differently. Uh, he knows the judges might be looking at, at aggression a little bit differently than they, they would in Thailand. So he knows that, you know, in a fight like this, if it's, it's down to, to that last minute of that last round, that pushing forward and being aggressive can sometimes be the difference. And so he looks to know when to push, when to lay back, when to be technical, when to be aggressive. So I expect to see a different Ethan catch on here in this fight. But again, I expect to see a different Diego Paez, same rate. I'm very excited to see a very dangerous Diego Paez right now. He's coming off of a loss from our triumphant champion, Sean Clamaco, the one himself. And I talked to him that night and he was on fire. Yeah, yeah, he lost that, that, that uh, fight to now champion Clamaco in his first triumphant. That was his second pro fight. 
Now after winning three in a row, he's back to, to stand triumphant. Absolutely, and, he, and as you can see, he's throwing with fire today. Now I saw Ethan rattling off leg kicks. He was working with Mr. Knock himself at Jogsman's gym when I visited him a few weeks ago, and his leg kicks were, were hitting louder than I'd ever heard, and, and I know he's looking to land some nice leg kicks on Diego Paez. He'll find that body. beautiful timing with that jab coming in from uh, Ethan Kachan. Nice uppercut, little, little sneaky uppercut for Paez. Beautiful overhand. They trade cooks there. That's a signature move from Diego Paez, using a jab and chopping the elbow that comes. I'm liking that Paez is wearing red and Kachan is wearing blue because we're watching fire versus water right now. Hot blood versus cold blood. Good call, Rockstar. I, I, I agree with you. You know, you got the cool, calm, collected. Ethan Kachan versus the fiery, explosive Diego Paez in the red there. Boy, nice little jab counter. Misses the kick, though. With nice little elbow, though. Diego Paez spinning with the, with the fist and the kick. Catches the kick, looking to dump. Oh, oh up and down goes uh, catch on. And in this situation, you have to hit by the third step, and he does that. Good to establish in the first round. Get inside your opponent's head. Get them, get them feeling questionable about throwing those body kicks to you. Let them know you might get dumped if you do. Oh, Beautiful nice team, team kick. Oh, oh my goodness. And that is that Matrix Muay Thai style I told you earlier. Diego Paez hitting things everywhere. Up, down, you see him using switch stance, spin kicks, fighting from orthodox and southpaw. Paez is looking a little more dynamic uh, for too much so for Ketchon to really deal with right now. If Ketchon doesn't find his rhythm on this guy, he might find himself getting edged out. Yeah, Paez is looking really good in this first round, but again, the composure of Ketchon. You make one mistake, you start to get a little overconfident, and he will catch you. He will catch you with something devastating, and it will change the whole fight. Oh yeah, so, look at the size of those quads. You don't want those getting flung at you when you're not expecting it. That's right, Rockstar Paez has to stay on his toes. P's and Q's, make sure he keeps his hands up, because uh, I know Ketchon is coming with big strikes to counter here. Something that also comes from being a traditional Nakmai, like uh, Ethan Gachon, is they always start off slow in the first round, so don't think that this is a sign of how he is. As the second round comes in, he's going to turn it up, and the third round, you're going to see the beast get unleashed. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, it's kind of a feel-out round with 10 seconds left in the very first round of our yeah. co-main event here. Whoa! Beautiful. Tornado kick coming oh, from Paez. Good Lord, Lance, but Kachon eats it. A little glove tap to signify they've earned each other's respect in that first round. But I have to say, Paez with his dynamic striking, as you referred to it, David, the Matrix-style Muay Thai uh, was very effective in that first round. Well, you know, interesting enough, both of these fighters have fought one of my fighters, Brandon Mendoza, and Diego Paez fought to a draw. Ethan Kachon took a loss. But both these guys are very, very skilled, and they can think and fight at the same time. So now we're going to round number two. They're going to solve this puzzle. Again, let's take a look at a replay action from the leg sweep. And Charles, call this as you see it. Oh, that is beautiful. Notice how he's getting Kachan's hip uh, above his own hip to really offset that balance. Once those hips are up, you're going to hit the sky, and your head's going down hard. And when you take a fall like that, Charles, do, does it embarrass you? Does it knock the wind out of you? What does it do? It, it definitely is discouraging. I, I, Ethan, Ethan does just like I do, because I fall several times and get up as fast as you can, pretend like it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we going for round number two? Who fell? I didn't fall. Yeah. This coach is calling for the switchblade, and I definitely want to know what technique yes. that is. Yeah, I, that's the first thing I thought, Charles, is what is the switchblade? Let me and see I, that switchblade, that see jab that. again. I imagine it's a switch kick of some sort, but you never know. Each each corner has its own little lingo. And, and I think the switchblade might be that switch right hand uppercut. It landed, it looked good, and he's been throwing that right uppercut from his regular stance, and he's been finding its mark. Yeah, he uses a switch punch technique and uses it very effectively. And now he catches the kick, oh. tries to spin something very dynamic. He threw his heel into the inside of Ethan's leg, and I know that hurt. Ethan looking like he's having trouble figuring out the unorthodox style of Paez so far. Now remember, in Thailand, they go five rounds. There's only three rounds in these fights here, so you really got to get active quickly, David, if you want to win these three-round fights. I want to see Ethan get inside. I want to see him go inside in that clinch and try to dominate 
Diego inside that clinch there. With a guy who moves around as much as Diego and a guy who's as stocky and strong as Ethan, the clinch could be the perfect thing to help him open up those scoring cards for him. Yeah, but it looks like he's stuck on the outside. He's, he's really been looking at his outside great kick, and it looks like he wants to land it. And maybe that might be a, a, a downfall here if he doesn't realize that maybe some clinch work might be good for him at this point in the fight. Yeah, stand on the outside with a much longer dynamic fighter like Diego Paez, always dangerous. With Paez's dynamic techniques though, as you were saying with John Herney, this takes a toll on your cardio. This is true. And if he can hold this down for the three rounds, this could be his fight. But if Ethan Ketchon smells that blood and goes in, it could switch around real fast. Yes, and we did see Paez get uh, floored by a left hand from Kamaka, so we know he is susceptible of getting rocked. I'm not saying his chin is questionable, but we know he can be hurt. Oh, yeah. if you get, I mean, any any mortal will go down from Sean Flamenco. That's why he's the triumphant champion. This is true. This is true, Rockstar. Can't disagree with you on that one. But man, what a fight we have here in the second round of our co-main event between Ethan catch on in the blue. Diego Paez landing that right hand in the red. And we could be more excited to see these boys scrapping up in the middle of the triumphant ring. I see a little blood. I see a little blood on both of them right now. And man, every time I come to a triumphant fight, this is the second pro fight in a row where we're just thankful for the Muay Thai gods oh. for putting them together. You know, I, 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 I'd have to see the replay. I'm not sure if it was, looked like it was a really high inside leg kick, but not, didn't see it hit the cup. I couldn't really, it happened so fast. But it looks like uh, Paez is feeling okay. Back to it. Paez's corner calling for numbers. They want to see a little bit of boxing for him, and I would like to see that as well. Nice outside leg kick checks. Ethan's return outside leg kick. Ooh, nice hands, knocks Ethan back to the most. Oh, oh, Ethan catches and tries to get a little dump himself. 10 seconds left, second round. Looks like Paez is pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. And another push kick to the face. It's the third or fourth one he's landed in this fight, yeah, David. Yeah. Paez is looking very dangerous in every second of this match. Well, if you love this action, stay tuned because we have the main event, Naripal Fairtex taking on Scott McKenzie for the triumphant super middleweight title. Guys, fasten your seatbelts for that one. Don't go away, but still we have to finish. Diego Paez taking on Ethan Quachon and our co-main event. And fighters are really getting instructions. They know they got to turn it on. Ethan knows he has to turn it on. Jokesan is telling him, you got to turn it on right now, brother. Looks like he's telling him to use long guard and trying to get inside. And then fire with the elbow. Long guard, fire the, fire the elbow. We were talking I would, about I would that definitely clinch. like to see Kachan use some of his footwork, stop some of uh, Diego Paez's uh, dynamic motion. If he gets a guy like that in the corner, takes away some of his mobility, he's got a better shot of landing the strikes he wants. Referee Steve Mazzagatti calling these two to the third and final round of our Kona main event of the evening. I am Brandon Kyle alongside Charles the Rockstar Rodriguez and David Huey as we fall triumphant seven. Ethan Kachan in the blue, taking on Diego Paez in the red. Maybe a little low kick position. Like these boys are both going for broken the third and final round, guys. They're both fighting like they're losing this match. Neither one of these men have any intentions of turning it down from this point. But when you match up two warriors like this, this is kind of the action you're expecting to see. Paez is looking like he is not weathering from this high output fight that he is producing here. He looks like he's still sharp and ready to throw with vigor. Ethan Ketchon still trying to find it, but God, you know, Paez is doing a great job at checking those low kicks. And as offensive as he is, he's really good with that check too. He's stopping Ethan Ketchon's leg kicks, and that last one caught him with the knee, and that's gonna definitely deter Ketchon from throwing more leg kicks like that. We saw Johnson and asking Ketchon to throw some elbows. Looks like Paez is the one introducing some elbows into the, into the fight here. Well, he wants him to use the long guard before he can roll that elbow. He wants to stop Diego's punches from the outside and try to get that elbow, that right elbow inside. Now Ethan's turning it on. He's getting inside, he's finding his distance. But that long jab of Paez is, is, is making him think every time he steps in. Paez is being brilliant with his reach right now. He does. He's got a long jab, he's got a long uppercut too. And so he's using that very, very effectively. Catch on is feeling it. He's trying to catch fire here in the third round. 
Lily needing that knockout probably to win this fight, or at least a knockdown. I would say Diaz started as a fire. He might be turning into Inferno right now. Yeah, he is catching in there, throwing logs and gasoline on his fire. He keeps, keeps throwing at that same intensity. He's not wavering at all in this third round, even with that high output, Charles. He is not slowing down one bit. This is a man on a mission. But the pure power of Ethan was able to get through that check, but Kaius is undeterred by it. Both fighters feeling the wear and tear here, it looks like. Not slowing down the great checks by Paez. Those knee checks are rest. definitely going to hurt him. And he returns right back to the leg. Ethan's going to be need to be icing tonight for sure. Ethan, that one. We are right next to Diaz's corner, and they are just as fired up as he is. They're asking for blood. They're yelling out things like, don't let him breathe. Keep coming forward. I can see where he gets his ultra-offensive style from. Ten seconds left, guys. Here we go. Oh, see that guy. Oh, he locked up. A Paiozzi looks like he's got that look in his eyes, but he comes back with his own elbow, boys, and it misses the high kick. Wow, what a finish to that third Both and these final gentlemen. round. Beautiful. Oh, my God, I love this sport so much. And when they hear that 10 second clap, they turn it on. They Dude. certainly do. Both of them are on fire for the 10 second clap. It's like in Street Fighter where they both just get their ultra bar filled up at the same time. They're both just slowing that ultra combo ready to go. It's Power beautiful. up. I'll tell you what, if I was playing Sega, I wouldn't know which one of these characters I want to choose. They're both amazing. <laughs> Great fight here. Diego Pérez. We're in the red, taking on Ethan Quachon. Three rounds of Muay Thai action as our co-main event comes to a close. And both fighters exhibiting a great amount of respect to each other. And the great thing, Diego Pei is able to use his reach and range effectively. Ethan Patron not able to get inside as close as he wanted to. Got inside, felt the range in the third round, maybe a little bit too late. But again, both fighters happy with the performance. I feel like they both have a good reason to raise their hands up. No matter how the decisions of the judges go, that was a beautiful performance. I'm, as a fan of this sport, my blood is pumping, I'm sweating a little bit. I didn't even move. <laughs> and I said earlier, styles make fights. These are two eclectic styles. Traditional Muay Thai from Ita Quanchong, the eclectic movement style from Diego Payas. Again, a clash of styles. They both represented their, their teams and this sport very well. This was an amazing fight, but I'll, I'll keep saying it. Triumphant Combat Sports is known for matching up amazing opponents and putting on amazing fights. You just, as soon as you see these two names together, you would be like, oh, that's gonna be a good one. Oh, absolutely, you know, Jeff Corris always says when he matches up fighters, he imagines the fight in his mind. And when he sees a good fight in his mind, he knows it's a great matchup. And that, surely this is the case. That's why I love fighting for this company so much because I know at behind the scenes, we have a genuine fight fan. We have a nerd of the sport who's sitting there watching the videos, get as excited as we are in the back. It, it's a beautiful thing. All right, we're going to send it to Stiff and Bonner for the official decision. All right, we're going to take a look at the replay. We can see some of that chopping leg kick from the second round here. That chopping leg kick from Diego Pe Pérez. And a punch combination from Diego. Jump push kick kind of grazes off. And Ethan Quachon tries a small sweep. Both these guys displayed beautiful Muay Thai, beautiful sportsmanship, and both of them have amazing haircuts right now. Ethan Kachan sporting the Bay Area fade. Diego Paez looking super lined up and clean. And we're going to send this to Stefan Bonner for this decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of unbelievable action, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. Judge John Baker scores about 30-27. Judge Adelaide Bird, 29-28. And Judge Junichiro Kimomicho scores about 29-28. For your winner, by unanimous decision, fighting out of the red corner, Diego Pai! Yay!
There you have our winner, Diego Payas, improving his record to four and one. Ethan Quatron drops to two and three. And we're gonna send it to Brandon Kyle. All right, all right, we're here with your winner, Diego Payas. Diego, it has been a while since we've seen you in the triumphant ring. You've rattled off three victories in a row. This is your fourth victory in a row. How does it feel coming in back into this triumphant ring and taking such a great fight? winning like that. It feels amazing, man. Thank you so much, uh, Triumphant, for having me. I know my first performance wasn't the best, but it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me in my life. It woke me up. It realized this is what I'm fucking here to do. This is my job. I don't do this as a hobby. I don't do this for fun. I do this to provide for my family and because I feel like it's the only thing that I'm made to do. So thank you guys for the awesome stage. Thank you guys for keep uh, continuing to keep my team on. And uh, God bless everyone. Thank you. Yeah, you said it's a family affair. Your brother winning in the uh, uh, undercard portion of the show. When I talked to you and interviewed you before the fight, you said, really, it's about training and my son. Tell me what it's like now being a father and a fighter and, and having your son to provide for in this sport and what it feels like to come in here, represent like that, be able to provide for your family. It feels like a dream come true. You know, I would have never expected my life to turn out this way. When I was, ever since I was a little kid, I've, you know, I grew up in a household being the little brother being bullied and whatnot, so I always had a chip on my shoulder. And I always thought fighting would be a part of my life, and then one day I found a Muay Thai, and here I am. You know what? Oh, I tell you, oh, sorry, go ahead. One more thing, I'd like to congratulate uh, my brother Chris Pius. Hey, there's not just two of us, there's three of us. We all complete, we do this every single day, and it's literally a dream come true. Thank you so much for having us both on the card. This is fucking amazing, thank you guys. Now, I know Jeff Kors is a master matchmaker here. I'm going to, you know, maybe throw a little something out there. You have one draw and one loss on your professional record. Your draw is to Brandel Mendoza, and you're fighting him next month. You want to avenge that. Your one loss is to our triumphant 132-pound champ, Sean Clamaco. What would you think about coming back here soon and maybe trying to avenge that loss against champ Sean Clamaco? You know, that, that's, uh, that's something that's made to be. It's got to happen. You know, it's my day to come back. Sean, you may have been the one that night, but I promise you I'm coming back. All right, guys, let's hear it for your winner tonight. Diego Paez. So let's take a look at the replay action from the winner himself, Diego Paez. That spin back elbow and then a return spin back elbow from Ethan Quachon. And as we said, when that timekeeper bangs out the last 10 seconds, these fighters fuel up for even more. A great fight. Diego Paez coming out with that win. 30, 27, 29, 28 on the other two judges' scorecards. Winner by unanimous decision over Ethan guys, Quachon. Guys, very, very proud before of Before we Quachon. move on here, before we move on to our main event of the evening, as many of you know and many of you are here to see, we scheduled to have Chas Mulkey make his return to the Muay Thai ring here tonight. Unfortunately, his opponent had some issues cutting weight and us being concerned, number one, about the safety of our fighters. We weren't able to continue with that fight. But Chaz came, he made weight, he did everything consummate, professional. And because of that, Jeff, gonna make sure he gets his whole purse for this fight. But we know you guys wanted to see Chaz. I know Chaz wanted to perform in front of you. I just wanted to give him an opportunity to let him know how grateful he is for you guys to come out here and represent. Uh, hey, I just want to say I appreciate everyone for coming out. Um, you know, it sucks when things like this happen. Uh, I wish we could have known a little bit sooner so we could have got a new opponent. Uh, but it's kind of happened the way it did. Um, six weeks. We're going to do May 25th. Uh, yeah, I just got to find an opponent that'll stick. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, go from there. You know, I, I was excited. I trained. I trained hard for this. So, um, you know what I mean? We want to get back in and uh, run it again. So. Yeah, no doubt, guys. We are going to put him on our next card right here at Samstown Casino, May 25th, guys. We're going to find someone that's going to stick. We promise you guys, we will see Chas Mulkey in the triumphant ring next show, guys. Let's give one round of applause for Mr. Chas Mulkey here, guys. Yes. And before we go, guys, a word from our triumphant CEO, Jeff Chorus, wants to just say a little something to you guys here tonight. Thanks, brother. 
How's everybody doing? Everybody having a good time? Woo! All right, first off, I want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting Muay Thai. Uh, Muay Thai is making a big movement out here in the U.S. It's, it's, it's huge all over the world, and it's about time that it gets huge here in the United States so we can become that reckoning force as well. Uh, first off, I want to thank Sam's Town uh, and their staff for hosting us and our, and our show. Uh, this is an amazing, a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful show uh, uh, platform for us to display uh, Muay Thai. Don't you guys agree? Yes. Yes. Also, I want to thank uh, my triumphant staff for working tirelessly throughout the days and nights to put this all together for you. So please give them uh, give them a round of applause. Definitely want uh, to thank uh, NSAC and IKF for working really good uh, together to make this show uh, run as smooth as possible. This is the, it's, it's the reason, this is, they are the reason why we're having such a smooth event. We're going to end up uh, on, uh, really early on time to get us over to our, our after party at Inspire. And uh, yeah, definitely. So make sure you guys hit, uh, hit that up. Another is you guys. You guys are what makes the show, besides the, the fighters, of course, but you guys, without your support, without your hype, without your vibe, this is not going to be possible, guys, okay? So please, support Muay Thai. Support other shows, all shows, okay? All Muay Thai shows. Tell your friends about it. Spread, uh, spread your, the, the, the links, the, uh, the, the, the clips to your friends. Tell everyone about it. This is, Muay Thai needs to grow. Okay, and the more you guys get that hype up, the bigger we're going to get, the better these uh, fighters will get, ta uh, get taken care of. So I'm going to end this uh, right here by saying, uh, you guys ready for a championship Muay Thai fight? Yeah. Let me hear you guys say, oh, hey. Oh, hey. One more time, guys. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. All right, guys. Thank you all for coming out. We'll see you later. All right, guys. We are ready for the main event of the evening. And fight fans, that was our promoter and matchmaker, Jeff Quarez from Triumphant Combat Sports, putting this fight together. This is Triumphant 7, the seventh match they put on. Great work. And before earlier, you saw Chaz Moki. He had a fight scheduled. That fight was canceled. His opponent ended up in the hospital because of the dehydration and the weight cut. That fight was unable to happen, but they promised to make this fight happen May 25th for Triumphant 8. And our promoter, Jeff Kaur, has made good on the purse anyway because he showed up. But now, this comes down to the main event for the IFS yes. Super, sorry, the Triumphant yes. Super yes. <laughs> Middleweight title. Oh. Here comes Smash. Scott McKenzie, and what he does is smash. He is on a nine fight win streak. He is a Canadian national champion. He is a Pan Am's 2018 gold medalist. He is a high, high level Muay Thai fighter, but he is in with the highest level of Muay Thai, taking on Narapol Vertex, who is our middleweight champion, moving up to super middleweight to try to make it. Dual championship, champ champ. But he has to get through a very talented, very hungry, and very, very in shape, and ready to rock, Scott Smash McKenzie. Scott McKenzie training out in Elite Muay Thai, training with Kieran Kettle. Now, I've been out to London where Kieran had his double K gym trained out of there. And this guy, he is a great trainer. He puts his fights with maximum efficiency. You're gonna see no movement wasted. And he will have his hands full against the champion right now, Nerpal Fairtex. Coming out, Mr. GQ, looking to add another triumphant championship at super middleweight to go with his middleweight championship here tonight. And uh, last time we saw him against Eddie Farrell for that 160 pound middleweight title. It was a beautiful display of Muay Thai. He has a composure of someone who has, I don't know, 200 plus fights, which he does. <laughs> and uh, you can see it the way he fights. Never seems to be stressed, strained. And uh, we're gonna see if Scott McKenzie can put some, some stress and strain on his face tonight here in this middleweight five round main event title fight at Triumphant Muay Thai Series 7. 
and we are about to see a legend of the sport step into the ring. The very ring shakes beneath his Muay Thai feet. I saw Mr. GQ. Mr. GQ, that's right. But I call him Mr. IQ. He's got the fight IQ with 250 fights to back it up. Mackenzie looks like he's chiseled from granite over there. You know he is tip-top shape. He's a personal trainer. His girlfriend of a long time is also a, a fighter, competes, pushes him, and understands the plight of the fighter, really supports him. He, he credits her with a lot of his a lot of his victories due to her support in the camp and outside of the ring. And he is excited to get in here and try to take this super middleweight title here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this championship fight is scheduled for five rounds in the super middleweight division. Your judges at ringside are Mark Smith, Patricia Morse Jarman, and Kudichiro Kimicho, with referee Chris Tagoni. And it is time for the main event of the evening. This fight is for the triumphant super middleweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He has a record of 21 wins, four losses. Hailing from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, weighing in at 164 pounds. Please give it up for Scott Smash Moore. Can see. And his opponent fighting out of the right corner. This opponent is from Fremont, California, with an outstanding record of 182 wins, 46 losses, and five draws, boasting 53 knockouts. He weighed in at 165 pounds. The legendary Narupal, Mr. GQ Bearcat. This fight's scheduled for three five minute rounds. We want to thank Charles the Rockstar Rodriguez for sitting in with us for those. Three wonderfully entertaining professional fights. Charles having fought two of these fighters. And uh, we were excited to have you. And thanks for coming and bringing that rock star energy to the booth. We're going to say goodbye to Charles and hello to Stefan Bonner in the booth. Oh, thank you guys very much for having me. Love trying. And this is the main here. event here. The Tell the Tape. Narapal Fairtex fighting out of the KOO Training Academy originally from Bangkok, Thailand. 182 wins, 46 defeats, 5 draws. Taking on Scott McKenzie, 24 and 3. Three years separate them in age. Two inches go in height to the advantage of Scott McKenzie. And fight fans, this is five three minute rounds for that triumphant super middleweight title. Joining us with us is the legend himself, Stefan Bonner. What's up, fellas? Thanks for letting me join you on this legendary fight. Yes, My God, yes. the main event of the evening. Imagine that. This guy has, what, over 250 fights yes. now, RuPaul? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, you see uh, experience versus uh, strength and aggression here. We're going to see how Narapol can deal with, with that forward pressure here. But I talked to uh, I talked to Smash McKenzie, and he said, you know, I'm not going to try to fight a tie like a tie. That's the biggest mistake you can make. He says, I'm going to use my footwork. I want to move in and out. I'm not going to stand right in front of him and play his game. I'm going to try to make him play my game. But with someone that has that many fights, it's hard to get them to break composure. We saw uh, Narapol Fairtex take on Eddie Farrell for that 160-pound title several months ago and uh, just absolutely demolished Farrell in that fight. Just looked like he was walking through the park while he did it. So we'll see if he can do the same thing at the super middleweight level against Scott Smash McKenzie. Well, you don't want to fight him like a tie. How do you want to fight in someone like Narupal? I guess uh, we're going to find out what the game plan is here <laughs> That's tonight. That's quite the riddle. Well, Nair Paul Fairtex, I saw him fight live in Bangkok back in 2006. We were on the same team in Holland versus Thailand. 2009, I was on the coaching staff there. And then Nair Paul Fairtex also fought his teammate, Yatsen Klai, on the Contender Series. Uh, coming up short yes. on that one. And then Push Kick Promotions Triumph, and he's been just fighting everywhere. 
But the interesting thing is, when I first saw him fight, he fought at 147. Been fighting at 154 later on. Now he's moving up to 165. Can he handle the weight, the size of Scott McKenzie? And that's the question in play. And I'd like to know what weight class did Naru Paul fight a majority of those fights at? Uh, probably a much lighter weight. Of yeah, himself. one one forty seven, one fifty four. You know, so he ah, was fighting ah. at that at that weight category. Okay, so Scott McKenzie's been at one sixty four. Yeah, he's been Scott McKenzie's been fighting at this weight for for a while. But you know, as Naru Paul gets older, I'm sure the weight cuts are more taxing yes. on his body. So he decided to move on up and uh, took this fight at a super middleweight. Uh, and uh, you know what? We are we are biting our nails in anticipation here of this main event five round title fight. It is triumphant. Muay Thai Series 7. I am Brandon Kyle alongside Stefan Bonner and David Huey as we get ready for our main event title fight tonight where Scott Smash McKenzie tries to take that super middleweight title, but he is standing across from the legend, Narapol Fairtex, talking to Scott McKenzie. He said, uh, you, you, you train until your, your idols become your rivals. He is facing his idol here today. He says he's been a fan since the Contender Series, but he is not going to be intimidated when he stands in there. And here we go, triumphant Muay Thai Series 7 main event begins. And here comes Scott McKenzie moving forward and now our pull again, a walk in the park on his face. And you can see right away, the biggest thing that stands out to me is the, the size of the frame of, of Scott McKenzie. You're right, he has a much bigger frame than Naru Paul. Yeah, he's chiseled from, from granite, I said. He looked like while he was standing there being introduced by you, and, and now you're seeing it. But Naru Paul is efficiency of energy, you know? He doesn't waste movement, he doesn't waste energy, and, and uh, it makes it difficult for his opponents to kind of rattle him because he's always composed, always looking like he's ready to counter. So makes it very tricky to get inside on someone like Narapol. Yeah, I feel like 250 fights fighting Muay Thai is about as strenuous as walking. <laughs> yeah, like I said, he looks like he's walking through the park when he yeah. fights. Again, I'm going to call this like a high-speed chess match. They're going to be calculating, and then out of nowhere, something's just going to explode. You know, I've seen Narapol land two really hard leg kicks. Everyone I've said that's sparred with me says, when he kicks you, it feels like someone hits you with a metal pole. And uh, you can see the damage that's getting done by those leg kicks already. They're yes. slapping against uh, McKenzie's legs there. Really smart tactic. He's leaning back, kind of timing that straight left. When he sees it coming, he's launching that inside kick. Yeah, because you got to put that weight forward to throw those big punches. And he's looking like he's countering. He's so calculated, is Naro Paul. So far, mostly kicks from Naru Paul, mostly punches from Scott McKenzie. But McKenzie pressuring, standing right in front. Looks like he's just trying to feel out the power and the, and the strength oh, of Narapal. Nice counter knee there from Narapal. Oh, well, looks like McKenzie's through the ropes there. Gonna break him up, let him reset here. Wait, heard that left here in ringside. McKenzie looking composed in there. You know, he's fought internationally. Won the Pan Am's gold last year. You know, he's 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 been through some some really tough fights with really tough opponents all over the world. So it's not intimidated, but catching some leather here from Narpol off the ropes. You know, this is quite a test for him. Narpol kind of did this, that high style, kind of laying low the first two rounds. Uh, he did yeah, it with yeah. Eddie Farrell. He just kind of felt it out those first two rounds and started turning it on in the end of the second, beginning of the third round. Uh, that's Muay Thai's Thailand for you. Actually, they, in Thailand, they hate it when the foreigners fight too hard the first round. It messes up their betting. Yeah, I'm trying to get some about. bets going. The yeah. gamblers are trying to get some blood flowing, some bets going. As you know, Scott McKenzie's fighting out of the southpaw stance. He's trying to use that jab to measure. It's a very, very calculating clinch style from both these warriors. It looks like McKenzie, 10 seconds left, knows he's in a five round fight. Neither oh. fighter is really trying to output too much energy here in this first round. Good thing the ropes were there for that throw. McKenzie would have went flying. Man, I'm looking at the inside leg, of, of lead leg of McKenzie right now, and it is already starting to raspberry. It's a deep red inside. Took two or three nice inside leg kicks on that lead leg from Narpal in that round, and you can see it's starting to do damage already. Well, fighters set up, you know, they're measuring each other, they're trying to find a pace, they're trying to find a range. I like the way Scott's setting up that jab to use that cross there, but Narapal's so calculating, he's laying off the ropes. You see redness on the back? That's actually because the ropes, he's leaning against the ropes, and he's been using that for, for play, for balance, for extend his range and, and just get out of the way and so he's playing those ropes very, very well. This 
take a look at some of the replay action. Step and call it as you see it. Here we go, Nurupal sitting on the ropes, yeah. countering with that right leg as we see it. There's that inside kick, and he, he lands a nice throw here. Look at that. Uh, this, is a, this is a little earlier where, where Scott got yeah, his arm caught on the And he the ends that clinch, and he goes to a knee guard right away. Very, very smart move there from Nurupal. Now, I, I, I went to see Nurupal doing some training here, and, and he did about 25 minutes of clinch with about five different guys. And, and he was tossing them around like they were pillows. I tell you what, look at that slip. Pulls that high kick from McKenzie, comes back with a kick of his own. Narpol's taking some shots on the rope, though. Misses the counter from Narpol there. You can see McKenzie Scott McKenzie picking up the pace right up. now. Yep, yeah, turning it up. But mm -hmm. I mean, Narpol said, OK, you're going to turn it up. I guess I got to turn it up a little bit here, too. See a little bit more uh, pep in his step. But boom, another inside leg kick from Narpol. Yeah. Oh, and upstairs, just oh, misses with another elbow. My goodness, was that a knockdown? He's got that head kick. He's got that head kick. They're going to call it a knockdown. Caught that head kick, and he's getting counted. Yes. Again, you should go right away to the neutral corner so the referee starts counting right away. He looks to have recovered from this. Yeah, it looked like that head kick caught him, and then there was a little bit of a, of a sloppy exchange, but definitely went down from that hard shot. Yeah, McKenzie's shaking it out. He feels it in the jaw a little. You see him loosen his jaw. So we see our first knockdown of the round here. Second round. I am Brandon Kyle alongside Stephen Bonner and David Huey. This is our main event title fight as Nara Polteritex takes on Smash. Scott McKenzie in this five round super middleweight title fight. McKenzie just went down, took an eight count. He's back right in front of Nara Pol. And, and you know, he said he wasn't going to play that style with Nara Pol, but it, it looks yes. to me like he's playing that style with Nara Pol right now. Definitely is. Can be very dangerous. Oh, Nara Pol again with that inside leg kick. And then and Scott being a southpaw, that inside leg kick is actually the power kick of Narapol. So it comes with even more force. Slips an elbow on the inside. It really yeah, is. When you're giving up reach on a tall southpaw like that, you're in the orthodox stance. It's another oh. nice throw. But yeah, that right leg's going to be the huge weapon for Narapol, and it has been. He's so patient. Just Look sits on the ropes. He looks like sits on gonna, the ropes. Are you coming or what? I'm waiting for his opponent, stalking him. One minute left in this second round here in Narapol. It's a knockdown in round two. Now he's just kind of laying on the ropes, letting McKenzie hug a little bit. And this and is a really interesting part of the fight, the clinch. McKenzie's a bigger guy, but most foreigners struggle in the clinch. And we saw that with Bukau in the first K1s. He came and just destroyed everyone from the clinch. So much so, they had to change the rules. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what. Whoa. Oh, another high kick as I speak. Into and he slips the high kick return. And, and another throw. throw like he's just a step straight. ahead. He just seems a step ahead. He could see uh, McKenzie's attacks coming. He timed everything beautiful there. Landed up in the clinch and took him for another nice touch, which, which is huge points in Muay Thai. Jeez, man, just to watch a technician like Narpol do what he does with 10 seconds left in the second round, it's just beautiful to watch. Another high kick from Narpol. Narpol getting a little grit, biting those teeth a little bit, like, oh! Kicks off the base leg of, of McKenzie. And, Wow, man. See, Narapal, what he does, he plays the ropes. He leans back against the ropes. He makes you miss, and he uses the ropes to bounce him back to get the counterattack. And he's doing that very, very well. Scott McKenzie is not finding that. He's getting the uh, counterattack back, but he's not able to find his range. Narapal Fairtex fighting a beautiful fight right now. Yeah, new Paul sitting on those ropes, just waiting. And you can see, now he's got the timing. You can see McKenzie telegraphing those attacks a little bit. Let's take a look at the first knockdown. Stefan call it as you see it. Here it is, head kick. He's hurt there, elbow, right hand. Down goes McKenzie. Look at that, beautiful. Nice. That. Boom. He it up like One, nothing. hurt there, elbow, two, right hand, three. Wow, what a combination. Wow. Nara pulls, not even stressing while he throws it, almost like he's Bored not there. trying to throw it hard. <laughs> and it just lands with such devastating power. So relaxed. Power. You can see how well he's countering now. He's, he saw the, the little telegraph movements that McKenzie does. He laid off the first round, let him throw his stuff. In the second round, he just started timing those counters. Man, it's amazing to watch this man work. And he, oh, whoa, another, another head kick. kick. Whoa, he uses the ropes to stay up there. Yeah. He does things that you just don't even think are possible. See that little ring. counter elbow, too? Oh, so smooth. Just, everything's timed so well. Like you said, it's no effort, it's all timing. I want to see Scott not put the pressure so much. I wanted to back off a little bit so Nirpal will have to come forward and play more of the center of the ring. 
because he's using those ropes too effectively against Scott McKenzie. A nice yeah. lead right hook there for McKenzie. Yeah, Best punch that. of the fight. Yeah. Now RuPaul counters with that high kick. You know, oh my god, that kick hits so hard. You can hear it slap even when uh, McKenzie blocks that kick. Yeah, even when the arm's up, that hurts. Oh, nice elbow. This is the high kick from Narapal. Checks the inside leg kick from McKenzie. McKenzie not throwing many kicks, as you said. It's kind of uh, McKenzie punches versus oh, the kicks at Narapal, and that's not you winning. You see McKenzie's so paranoid about that right high kick. Now Narapal goes to the left side and lands. He's taking what uh, McKenzie's giving him here off the ropes, and you're right, David. I mean, this is Narapal's game. It's, yeah, you just see the fight IQ coming out here with 250 fights. Yeah, Narapal took his first fight. He said he was seven years old, started training, fighting it professionally at 10 years old. That's how you build up so many fights in your career there. Oh, it looks like maybe a low kick was uh, was landed there by Nara Paul, and Mackenzie doesn't even want to take that time. Maybe he should take that time to shake it off and think about yeah, it a little bit. Yeah, he looks bit. a little frustrated here. Nothing, he's really trying his work, and he might have to go a little caveman, furung, foreigner, wild man style. Yeah. Uh, it looks like uh, if it keeps going this at this rate, he's going to need a stoppage to win this fight. Yeah, he's he, Narpal's landing and, and racking up points I, here in Yeah, third got him round. down every round, not to mention that 10 eight round. Yep, yep. Narpal Fairtex doing what he does off the ropes. He did a very similar fight uh, with uh, Eddie Farrell. And, uh, oh. oh my God, that one hurt him a little bit. You there can see it is him. again. Kind of rocked him a little bit with that high kick. We heard it here slap like a baseball bat. Uh, yeah, I got a hand at the McKenzie. He's hitting at least probably four or five of those. My goodness. Because he's doing very well keeping his composure, playing that possum face, trying to use that jab to measure. Get what, a, what a treat to sit here in the best seat of the house. Really, though. It's it? all the fight of a legend like Nauru Paul. Just so smooth in and out. Narpool still riding those ropes, got the high guard. McKenzie trying to faint, maybe trying to, you know, poke his way in here and open up Narpool, but Narpool is not falling for it, hanging on those ropes, not stressing whatsoever. Ten seconds left in this third round. And look at look at his attack. He's countering, it's mostly with feet. Boy, there's a name. Kind of goading uh, McKenzie on, like, what do you got? Throw it at me. Yep, and uh, that's Muay Thai. In case you're not uh, aware of the scoring of Muay Thai, the, the kicks count as more points as the punches. And a lot of people aren't aware of those throws. Catching the kick of your opponent and jumping them or throws from the clinch count as points too. Yeah, and it really tires an opponent out having to get up, get up again. Not to mention being a little embarrassed every time you get dumped. And you see the frustration on the face of McKenzie after those dumps and those high kicks. He's starting to get a little frustrated, maybe losing his game plan a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and it breaks your rhythm. It throws off your timing. Let's take a look at the replay action here. There, you see that shift to the left, high kick, wobbled him. Just like the knockdown. But he knocked down, he followed it with a little elbow and a right hand. Yeah, you know, Narapol is just kind of almost, I call it big brothering Scott McKenzie. Yeah. Almost like, not concerned whatsoever. Doesn't matter what Scott throws. He's just slipping and ripping right back. And maybe we see this is the championship rounds here. Guys, it is Brandon Kyle alongside Stephen Bonner and David Huey. We are calling the final fight, the main event title fight between Nara Paul Fairtex and Scott McKenzie. It's been a banger so far. Nara Paul knocked down McKenzie in the second round, wobbled him in that third round. Now we're in the championship fourth oh. round. And, and it looks like Nara Paul's starting to turn up the heat a little bit, David. Oh yeah, he wants to try to make his mark right now. Two more rounds in this fight. Oh, beautiful counter right elbow there as McKenzie attacked. Just the timing is so impressive. Just looks sitting like on those ropes. McKenzie's complaining about a, a, another low groin kick there, but continues to fight here. You see the frustration. Kind of, it's a puzzle he can't figure it out. Almost like McKenzie's looking at a, a calculus problem that he just can't figure the answer to here, no matter how hard he tries. Yeah, you can see him in there thinking, and when they, you hear it from a lot of fighters, when you're thinking, that's when you get caught. Yep. You know, most fighting's gotta be on the, by the unconscious mind, reaction. Looks like McKenzie's gonna choose to press forward and try to really catch Narpal. But you know, McKenzie, uh, with that frame, carries a lot of power, and all it takes is one shot. Yep. Even if you're Nara Paul Fairtex, if he catches you good, you never know. It can yeah, change yeah, the whole fight. Yeah, the best punch of that fighty land was that lead right hook. 
Let's see if he'll go back to it. That's usually uh, what, what fighters do. If you find something that works, you go back to it. Just like Naru Paul's been doing with that right high kick all night. Naru Paul on the other side of the ropes now. Again, I want to see Scott not pressure him against the ropes. I want him to draw him out, make Maripal fight more at the center of the ring. You know, maybe uh, Scott's figuring I have a, a great cardio. I'm going to push, tire out Narapal. But the way Narapal's fighting, it's not going to no, get tired. Yeah. He could fight like this for 50 rounds, yeah. it feels like. You're not going to tire out. It's not only he's leaning tie. away against the ropes, tie. but he's using those ropes to bounce himself back, too. So he's adding a little bit of power by using those ropes to spring him back forward to get those counter against Scott McKenzie. Now, McKen just, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Stephanie. McKenzie is a little more aggressive this round, but look at the welts on his body. Inside leg, the back, the body. You can see the redness starting to build on, on McKenzie. And, and I went to see Narapal training there with Ganyao, and I saw him clinching with five, six different guys. And I thought they were, you know, you know taking it easy on Narapal, letting Narapal <laughs> throw him around because I was there videoing. But I tell you what, now watching him against McKenzie, it looks like they were still trying 100%, and Narapal was able to do that, seeing what he's doing to McKenzie here in this fight. And he said it, his coach, Ganyao Fairtex, the big, the tallest tie I've ever seen. I've never seen. seen. I say that every time. He was also the Muay Thai coach on season one of the Ultimate Fighter. Oh, so we so go way back. There you go. The switch kick by Scott comes up a little bit short. Narapal, again, just using that long guard. Stopping Scott McKenzie. Very scientific fight. Again, a lot of times fighters say that the fights are won, not by their body, but by their minds. Their fight IQ, we're seeing that. But Mr. GQ himself, here we see Kieran Kittle cornering his fight, Scott McKenzie. I think Kieran, before I ask, let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of the replay action. Stefan called as you see it. There's Naru Paul on the ropes as usual. Scott landing a right hand. Naru Paul backing him off with those kicks. Story of the night. That right leg. Look at Scott McKenzie standing in the middle of the ring, waiting for that fifth round to begin. You know he wants it, but there's just no way for him to find it right now. He knows. It's do our die. He's got nothing to lose. He's down. Naru Paul pushing. Put, Pitching a shutout so far. Let's see if McKenzie could disrupt his rhythm a little bit. Now, this is the fifth and final round for this championship. Boy, oh boy. I'll tell you what, you know, McKenzie needs to come out really looking for that devastating shot that might hurt or rock Narco, but when he does that, he's opening himself up to even more counters from Narco. Oh, nice head kick again from Narco. Man, that right head kick is landing over and over again. Scott's definitely pulling on the aggression this time. Scott still never employed the, the strategy that you kind of wanted to see of maybe backing up and see what happens when Narco is moving forward instead. And here, us in America, we're so obsessed with the finish and the knockout. Oh, oh, no, no, oh my God. Too soon. As you're speaking, Stephen. Wow. I was just about to say, ties don't get obsessed with the knockout. If you're pitching a shutout, just sit back and enjoy the victory. But man, another right high kick. This one sends McKenzie to the canvas. Wow. Narpo, I think, you know, you said that, but... Narpal is a tie, but he's been living in America, and maybe he's been watching a lot of fights in America, and maybe he's looking for a finish in this fifth round. He throws that head kick once again. And I'm sure he got the nickname Mr. GQ in America. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, minute 30 left, guys. It is Brandon Kyle alongside Stephen Bonner, David Huey, Narpal, Fairtex in the red, Scott McKenzie in the blue. Looks like Fairtex is running away with this middleweight, super middleweight championship fight tonight, but. Scott McKenzie is pushing, 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 looking for something. Can yeah. he find it? McKenzie came in aggressive like he had to do in this fifth and final round just to eat another right high kick from Naru Paul, sending him to the ground for the second time here. Let's see if he can finish strong right now. Nothing to lose. Go in and see if he can get that action. Again, that just oh. high kick from Naru Paul Fairfax just comes out of nowhere. They're so fast, one after another. 
now he switches to southpaw, firing that right jab. He knows he's got this fight in the bag. Here we go, let's see if Narapul can land one more big shot. Less than a minute left in this final fifth round. Super middleweight championship fight. 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if Scott McKenzie yep. can find that one shot or if Narapul can finish off and become champ, champ, middleweight and super middleweight triumphant champion here tonight. Now RuPaul just deep in jab and keeping McKenzie away. He knows he's got this fight in the bag and he's just 10 seconds away from another title. 10 seconds left, folks. What will happen? One last exchange here on the ropes. Will Narapol be able to push off? No, it ends in the clinch. And that is our main event. Triumphant Sear Boy Series 7, guys. What a fight. Total domination. Now RuPaul Fairtex. Wow, just wow, what a fight, what a performance, what composure, what technique. Yeah, and I think the word of the night for this main event is fight IQ. Naru Paul just showed a much higher IQ. It's like he knew what McKenzie was going to do before he did it. Let's take a look at that knockdown. Stefan, call it as you see this knockdown happen. And it's the story of the night. It was the right leg of Naru Paul Fairtex. And here it is one more time. Going low, going low, going high. Bam, right on the chops. Down goes McKenzie. You know, he, he flicks those high kicks like you flick a fly off your shoulder. Yeah, And just no, puts McKenzie right on the canvas. <laughs> what a fight. So, unless... Uh, Unless there's three blind judges here, I think we can all agree that uh, now our Paul Fairtex will become champ champ of the triumphant middleweight and super middleweight divisions here tonight, gentlemen. It just amazes me. Just like I said, the fight IQ, like, uh, he does everything so smart. He doesn't even get his, his kicks checked that much, which really stinks for, for us new fight, not us, but for new fighters, when you get a knot on your shin, oh, it sets you back about a month. I didn't see one, one of his kicks checked tonight. Amazing, just amazing. Well, we got a hand to Scott McKenzie for stepping up for this challenge, you know. And there's our promoter, Jeff Chorus, with that coveted, triumphant, Championship super middleweight belt. It's a belt many fighters want. And we're gonna see one person crowned with that right now. Scott McKenzie just finished five rounds with the legend Narapal Fairtex on the main event here on Triumphant 7. A great rally between these two fighters. We saw Narapal Fairtex playing those ropes very effectively, leaning back, putting everything together using the counters, using that ropes to evade, defend, and even spring himself off for the counterattack. Scott McKenzie, not able to find an answer. Very, very upset, but you know, you gotta commend his effort coming in. I mean, everybody I've ever seen fight combined has less experience than Nara Paul Fairtex. So, you know, great learning experience for Scott McKenzie to take back to Canada with him. I know he'll only grow from sharing the ring for five rounds with Mr. GQ Nara Paul Fairtex. Oh, absolutely. You know, when you match a tie, you gotta match another tie to match up that fight experience. There's just no other way. Americans or other foreigners don't fight as much as these fighters here, but he will take this to the bank. I wanna see more of Scott McKenzie. Very, very clean, very, very technical, good technique. Just didn't have the experience to take on Narapal Fairtex. Again, these fighters show their respects to each other. Mr. GQ show his fight IQ on this fight here. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Mark Smith scores this bout. 49-44. Judge Patricia Morse Jarman scores this bout 49-44. And Judge Kunichiro Kamijo scores this bout 50 to 43. By your winner, by unanimous decision, fighting out of the red corner, Narupal, Mr. GQ and there you have it, Narapal Fairtex becomes the second triumphant belt under his weight. Now the super middleweight champion. He was the middleweight champion, also holding two titles right now. 
Very happy, and we see his baby inside the ring. We're gonna send it to Brandon Kyle. Brandon Kyle is gonna interview our winner, Narapal Fairtex. And inside the ring is Crew Airy. He's probably gonna be the translator for Narapal. I think they're gonna go for a picture first. There you go. From left to right, Brandon Kyle. There's his family right there. Jokes and on, the legend, the wooden man off to the right over there. Jeff Kors, our promoter, second to the left. Crew Air, crew on. Narapal Fairtex, his wife, his son, and then the legend, Jones and on All Fairtex. All right, guys, we're here with your winner, Mr. GQ Narapal Fairtex. Just became a champ champ, middleweight, super middleweight champion, triumphant Muay Thai series. Narapal, you made it look like another walk in the park. How are you feeling after another Wonderful performance here in the triumphant stage. Uh, he said uh, it's easy, uh, kind of easy, but the, the, uh, the, the elevation of the here is a bit higher, so he's kind of be careful. But he now. It seemed like you, you didn't really get phased in there too much during the fight. Was there anything that he hit you with that you felt that kind of made you go, oh, wow, did, did any power that you felt that surprised you or made you kind of need to step up your game a little bit during the fight there? Okay. He said he had to watch, pace him out slowly for the, his appointment. Now, it looked like you kind of were just, like you said, feeling him out in the first two rounds of the fight. Then you started to turn up the juice in the third, fourth, and fifth round. You never were able to knock him down in, I think, two or three separate occasions. Was there any time he kept coming that, did you feel like you might be able to finish him in the fight? Uh, he said uh, he have to uh, read his appointment really carefully how he's fighting style. Uh, he don't want to push that, take that uh, mistake easily. You knew you had a dangerous opponent in front of you. You had another stellar performance. You are now a dual champion. You're a champ champ. You're the middleweight champion of triumphant. The super middleweight champion of triumphant. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we can all agree that that was a wonderful display of Muay Thai technique. Can we give one more round of applause to Mr. GQ, Narapal Fairtex. And there you have it, Narapal Fairtex becomes. Guys, on behalf of Triumphant Combat Sports, Jeff Chorus, our CEO, our Chief of Operations, Zay Martinez, the whole team, my co-commentator, David Huey, we want to thank you for coming out. We want to thank the Samstown Casino and Hotel for having us. We'll be back here May 25th. Make sure you guys are here for that show where we'll have Chaz Mulkey come and go ahead and make his return. Join us at Inspire Lounge for the after party. Get home safe, guys. We will see you May 25th for TA right here at the Samstown Casino. Thanks, guys, and good night. And Triumphant 7 comes to a close for professional fights. We first saw Miguel Amagrisi taking on Nathan Adams. Nathan Adams wins by split decision. It was the overhand right that was able to find his mark. He was coming up short on the first round, found his mark on the third round. Nathan Adams takes that win by split decision. Then John Herney took on Johnny Parsons. That spin back elbow they used in the first round knocked down Johnny Parsons. Johnny Parsons was not able to catch up. A great fight there. John Herney wins his professional debut. Then it was Diego Paez using that matrix style Muay Thai, his footwork to shut down Ethan Quachon. That range, that style, everything he used, he won by unanimous decision. And then our main event, we saw Narapal Fairtex taking on Scott McKenzie. Now, 
Nairpal, we call him Mr. GQ. He is known as Mr. Fight IQ. He used that Fight IQ, used those ropes effectively, able to evade the punches and kicks from Scott McKenzie and bounce himself back off for the fight, scoring two knockdowns and becoming the triumphant champion two times, not only as a middleweight, but a super middleweight. Brandon which one was your favorite fight? I, you know what, I, I don't know, but that big sexy John Herney, I, I tell you, every time he gets in there, he puts on nothing but fireworks. I might have to go with that fight, but that display of a pure Muay Thai skill and ability composure by Nara Paul Fairtex, I mean, I don't know, even though it wasn't as competitive of a fight, because of the display, it's a tough tie-up, but I'd have to say as far as competitive fight of the night, you gotta give it to Parsons and Herney for that banger that they had in the pro main or the pro main card, but uh, it could go a lot of different ways here tonight, David. And that's what makes Triumphant so exciting. Each bout is different. Each style matchup is completely different. You see different styles each time. Now, Brandon Kyle, tell us what we have coming up for Triumphant 8. We have Triumphant 8 coming Back right here, Samstown Hotel and Casino, May 25th. It's only six weeks away, guys. I know you guys are excited to see Chas Mulkey make his return, long-awaited return to the ring. Being such a Muay Thai specialist, we would have loved to see him here tonight. Unfortunately, it happened, but we will have him back for the next show, and we don't know who's going to be on the next show. I got a lot of people that are hitting up the triumphant page, hitting up, emailing Jeff. I want on. I want on. People from uh, South America, Africa, England, China, Thailand, Canada. Everybody wants on this show, so you just never know. You're going to have to tune in. Go ahead and subscribe to our Facebook subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Instagram, and you will hear it first when we sign fighters to fight on T8, May 25th, right here, live at the Samstown Hotel and Casino. On behalf of everyone at Triumph and Combat Sports, the whole team, front to back, it takes a village to put on a fight like this, and we have a wonderful village of help and people behind us. David Huey, I'm Brandon Kyle. We're gonna go ahead and call it a night, but we will see you May 25th for Triumph and 8. Guys, stay triumphant.